What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. Joining us today is our good friend, Mr. Chad Ashley. Hey, everybody. How you doing? And MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor. Or working for the man. You can email us info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, show topic ideas, artist suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, MoGraph.com, of course. Hit us up. Noob or expert. Doesn't matter. If you're new, you're just joining in mm-hmm. and uh, you're kind of getting into this whole thing and you're like, what's up with this? What's up with this MoGraph yeah. thing, yo? What what what's, render what, engine is best what for rendering pizza? Yeah. <laughs> yes. What what render what engine, render engine use, use, you, for you use for pizza? You can just hit us up. <laughs> for use for pizza. pizza. <laughs> what render for pizza oven? Let us, uh, you know, uh, send us a question and uh, we will answer you as to what type of pizza oven to use for your render. <laughs> and we uh, also Break try to answer time. the expert stuff i would like to say if you'd like to join our slack channel make sure that you email us through the thing and tell us that you would like to join the slack channel instead of if saying you do not say i would I want like to, to join be a member and that's it. of what <laughs> of which thing because we have yeah. a couple things um you have to tell us to email specifically for slack mm-hmm. or we don't know that that's what you're referring to so make and sure will... that you <laughs> i don't understand the question and i won't answer it right yes uh, that's, uh, I don't have any specific emails. We had a couple, uh, in the, for the crypto segment. We won't talk about crypto until the crypto segment. The week in review, Chad's here. We got a uh, new David Aryev tutorial that came out this week. Yeah. Chad's making sure he gets his, his hydro on. <laughs> and, uh, we will, uh, we'll talk about that link to Aryev's tutorial when we get to the link segment, but just wanted to put that out there. If uh, anybody would like to look it up now and bookmark it. The only other thing that I had on my on my week wrap up is I guess uh, Mitch Meyer's car caught fire. Yeah, <laughs> just thought that was interesting. I know. Note. Yeah, it's all right. It was a lease. Cool. You know, <laughs> yeah. Let's wait for it to happen. That's what he said. He was like, "It it's a lease, so you know, whatever. As long as nobody's <laughs> in the car, right? I guess it's you know." He whatever. seemed very happy about it. I guess that one was funny. <laughs> It, it was, you know, the meme with the girl who's smiling and the house is oh, on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like that, except it's <laughs> Mitch and his car is on fire. It's funny. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I hope everything's cool there. That's all I got. I don't know if anything else happened in the week. I don't know. I've been so jammed with work lately that it's like, oh, is there, oh, a boat oh. Got, got stuck? Oh, I had no idea. All <laughs> right. right. You see that in between all the the NFTs on your feed and right. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is this again. This time of year, it's when everybody's waiting for NAB to happen. Yeah. So it's usually slow, and I know NAB isn't actually happening in April, but I, I feel like a lot of people are kind of still um, like doing NAB ish type things. Like for example, uh, Maxon is still yeah. having a, a stream. They're gonna yeah, still getting drunk. We'll make sure to still get drunk. Uh, Maxon's got like a three day show during that time. You know, I, I feel like people are still just pretending it's NAB. Yeah, that, I wish it, I wish it was, man. I know we yeah. all need a vacation. <clears throat> yes. Can you believe it's been a year since like we were like, oh, NAB's canceled. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, it sucks, Freaking. man. I'm so yeah. looking yeah. forward to getting the hell out of here. Yeah, no. October, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hopefully there will be. You know, NAB, uh, right? uh, uh, Comic Con announced they're doing a physical one in uh, an in person one in November. You know, so mm, that's yeah. a good sign. How many like convention centers are just going to be completely booked in the fall? Yeah, like right? I feel like everybody's right. like, yeah, the fall feels like a pretty good time. Let's just book everything then. Yeah, I mean the amount of people, the amount of people that I know who's who've gotten vaccinated and stuff. I, I probably know more people who have gotten vaccinated, or at least their first one, than have not. You oh, know? Well, that's good. So that's I'd say that's a pretty good sign. 
That is like a great my service. whole my whole family. Yeah. There's maybe like three of us or four of us who haven't. Besides all the kids, that's going to take time. You know. Right. Yeah. 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 It's kind of similar. But I'm wondering, is is a uh, is well, first of all, if they have any B in October, when's mm-hmm. the next one going to be? It'll be right? April again. I bet. Yeah, I'm sure. I bet it'll, it'll be April. It'll be back to the regular time, unless this yeah. is like a wild success, and I'm sure it, it, you oh, know there's a very not. good chance it will be. But I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a it's huge also, success because it's going to be the first one besides Camp Mograph, I'll say, you know. Well, I feel like you wonder who's going to come. If people are comfortable, like that's the big question is like yeah. are they going to be comfortable enough to to show up? Mm-hmm. Well, one of my ideas that I was thinking for it and actually somebody did the same thing I was thinking for um their their high school reunion that I saw on Facebook is having something that says whether or not you're cool with like hugging or whatever, right? Because yeah. we all like immediately see each other and it's yeah. hugs all around. But maybe if you had Straight a pin or something that says, yeah, you know, I I'm I'm cool with hugging yeah. or fist bumping <laughs> or whatever it yeah. is, <laughs> you know, to make sure that you don't come up to someone and just like make them uncomfortable. Well, it, I would hope know, that nobody is like walking around just immediately hugging people without asking right. them like that's weird right. yeah sometimes it happens though i've seen some people recently in, in you know irl and it's immediately it's like oh, oh is this, and then it gets awkward so uh, if you just had a pin right that said you didn't have to ask that's probably not a bad yeah. idea i mean <clears throat> it would be a, an opportune time <laughs> to like make a hilarious pin too right right, right. Or, yeah. or a hilarious t-shirt whatever you right. whatever you want to do right in that's training awesome. do not pet you know, like the, <laughs> like the dogs have. Right. Be two two pins. One says hugs, and one says drugs. <laughs> oh, you it's like it's like one. a like a Brazilian way you come out on top. Where you That's like right. you can flip the card right. from green to red. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Sorry, we're open, and then you turn it out around. So when you see somebody you actually like want to like shake hands right. with, you can be like right. put the green, and then you see somebody you're like ah, I don't really like that person. Put it to red. Yeah. Oh, they're coming. Yeah. yeah no. All right. <laughs> Yeah. It's free ideas like a here. Flag, flag right? system. Million dollar idea right there. Yeah, yep. right there. You can have that. Yep. Yeah. For free. Just putting that out. <clears throat> yeah. So, yeah, we'll see what happens with that. I'll be interested to see. I don't think that in October there's going to be all the fanfare that we usually have. We probably won't do the limo rides and the, the, those kind of things right away. Well, I mean, maybe. We'll We're going to shove a bunch of people in a box together you never right off know. the bat. Dude, we could book all that mm. stuff one month before it happens. You know, who knows? By July, everything may be gone, and we're like, all right, we're we'll open see. 100%. Everything's clear. We're good. Let's do I'm this. I'm just curious how many Leroy people Jenkins. <laughs> exactly. I think people should just put their Vax card in their NAB badge holder. Yeah, right. <laughs> And, like, oh, let gosh. it sit there with, you know, the regular credentials. And that way, you know, mm-hmm. like, okay, that person's okay. We, we can yeah, hang. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, that'll be interesting Interesting to see. We'll we'll just be keeping an eye on that. And Camp MoGraph, we don't have any updates to Camp MoGraph dot yet. Yeah, dot, we've, we have... Blah, um, yeah, just yet, but... We do, yeah. we we have had speak. some... some uh, some teacher changes nothing official to announce at the moment but we did have some conflicts of schedule back uh because we changed it to september yeah so we've had a few people you know conflicting schedules so we've had to switch out some teachers but i think y'all are going to be really excited about who we have you know so uh but nothing to announce yet yeah tz 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 That's all I got here, but uh, let's go to some Ravcock. What's your flavor? What's your flavor? So we're going to do a little <laughs> state of the... be like a music... I was expecting like a musical intro on that. Right. No, no. I need slide whistles and like <laughs> yeah. horns and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Take yeah. it full morning like, zoo. You know, yeah, full morning zoo. I, I love that right. idea. I think I think we should go full morning zoo. We should have a, Mo, a MoGraph morning show. Welcome to Just... Crazy Ira in the Douche. <laughs> MoGraph in the morning. Oh my god, that needs to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard enough Slide to play. We don't one, nobody commutes one a anymore, week, though. let alone every morning. How's that yeah. commute going for you out there? Damn. Yeah. Oh, you're working from home, eh? All right. Top of the hour, <laughs> traffic's backed up on yeah. the 75. <laughs> Let's check in with Don on the chopper. 
Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's working from home, so this is really pointless. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I was going to throw a Les Nessman joke in there, but I don't think anybody would get it. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I, I got it. That's what's important. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, <laughs> is that so, an age check right there? Yeah, yeah. that's an age yeah. check. All right. WKRP. In oh. Cincinnati. So, Cincinnati. All right. So we're going to do a state of the state of the render engine address. And let's just like let's dive through them. We're gonna start. We're gonna start with the offshoot ones, mm. and I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean you know they might not have gotten a lot of traction lately and a lot of coverage. So let's start there. Let's work. I mean, it is Ravcock, right? We we haven't talked about the other parts of the acronym in a while. So like, <laughs> right. let's work backwards. So let's talk about cycles. Mm. Yeah. What's the state of cycles right now? That is a render engine. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cool. It What's is. Next? It's inside of <laughs> yes. Blender. It's inside of Blender. I don't know. And I haven't heard much uh, about it. Other yeah, than, I, you know, uh, so like I, I, you know, last talking to Jules or whatever, they're talking about supporting it in uh, in the Octane renderer or whatever, which is cool. Yeah. You know, that New was one they were planning on thingy. working into. Okay. So, yeah, I, don't know. I mean, I, I guess I that's all we have. I don't really use it, so I don't. I don't yeah. really know. <laughs> all right, next up on the list, uh, V-Ray. V-Ray. Uh, they recently had an update things. to what was it, V-Ray five or something like that. Um, I played around with it. I was on the alpha for a little while. I don't know if I'm allowed GPU? to talk about that. It did have GPU stuff, but you know, it's it's. You get these ones that have the GPU, and I, I, I don't know if... I can't speak for Arnold specifically. I'm sure Chad can. You know, as far as speed-wise with, you know, Octane and Redshift, I feel like those are just, like, super killer with the with the the the, uh, the GPU rendering, you know? Yeah, for me, V-Ray has a, a place in my heart from mm-hmm. back in the day, you know? Same. Um, but I just feel like it just didn't really... <clears throat> advance much and it certainly didn't advance for c40 users enough yeah yeah and i just think the look of it is a bit dated compared to corona which in in my opinion looks freaking amazing right um so yeah it's just never really like i was paying attention to what they were doing uh in c40 and with their updates and whatnot i think it's it's definitely cool to see them pay attention to that that this market I'm glad that they're finally that Chaos Group took it back. Yeah, because yeah, for sure like, that was that had to happen, or just don't even like mm-hmm. bother with it. Right, exactly. Yeah, but they no, don't I have. Don't... But they don't have their Ahmed, you know. Right, to, and to and I think that's. Octane, I mean, they might. I I don't know. Like for me, like the big three, I've gotten to know pretty closely, and I I know just how important plugin developers are to the success of a renderer's uh, implementation mm-hmm. into right, a, a piece of software. So, like, I don't know the V-Ray uh, team for C4D, but, I mean, they're making progress, which is great. I just, mm-hmm. for me, if I was given a choice between V-Ray and Corona, owned by the same company, I mm-hmm. would go Corona. Interesting. What are, and, what, are, what's, what are you running on your computer right now? Is it still you mean the, like the 32 render? core oh, Threadripper? Yeah. yeah, it's it's the uh the thirty two core threadripper, two twenty eighty TIs, uh with an N V link. It's a few years old now though. I might yeah. I might be in the in the market for a new machine this year. Uh, but you know, I'm not in any hurry because the graphic you know, the graphics cards are so hard to come by that yeah, they are. I feel like I'm getting what I need right now, kinda. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like not motivated to like go down that rabbit hole. Well yeah. Sean, uh, Sean in the chat, Sean Astrom, he says there's no nodes in uh, V-Ray yet either. Yeah, that's, that's a huge a, you know what, bummer. That's okay with me. Like Whoa. that's that's one reason why I really liked V-Ray <laughs> when I started is because you know it was almost exactly like straight vanilla cinema. You know. Yeah. Well, Corona so. kind of feels like that too. Sean's been trying to mm-hmm. get me to use Corona for a while, and I picked. I I actually installed it and opened it, and it was just lacking so many things for me that mm-hmm. I was like, I, I can't do it. Like I just. Yeah. I can't do it. I I liked do- Corona when I opened it up as well, like because it felt like vanilla C4D. You know. Right. And I like I like 
I like how simple you like vanilla vanilla ice cream. We get it. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) All right. Does your favorite flavor is ice? I get it. (laughs) (laughs) I I I feel like it was getting some traction Mm -hmm. before coronavirus, right? (laughs) And like, have they considered rebranding? Right. Right. At this point, yeah. I wondered about that too when when everything kind of happened and. You know that conversation took place. You know oh, that I'm conversation sure. was yeah. like, "Well, fuck." You know what do we do now? And it's like uh, the well, Google foo is ruined. Yeah, it yeah. really is. Like it, it, it would be hard. I, I don't know, man. Like that takes a lot of time to like completely yeah. rebrand and redo something. So I can't imagine that was um, an easy decision to make. But I, you know, yeah. in hindsight, I think they'll be okay. I think they can. I think they'll yeah. they'll be fine. It's just like you said, like the Google juice is going to be kind of like really hard. Like there's not yeah. going to be a lot of discovery. Mm-hmm. It's right. the Michael Bolton problem. Yeah. Why should I change my name? He's the one who sucks. <laughs> exactly, dude. <laughs> oh, so <clears throat> be interesting to see if they do. That. I feel like it would be. It, it, I think I don't know. I, honestly, like my perspective, and I might be wrong on this. I I feel like. They're, they're doing well. If they rebranded, they might kind of be able to have like a resurgence, like a, with a new name or something. It kind of it could be a great opportunity to get I back mean, out I'm, there. You got to assume that V Ray, you know, since Chaos Group owns both of them, I mean, wouldn't they implement a bunch of you know the positive things from Corona into V Ray eventually, and then <laughs> not really? I, I think they're com- all together. They're it, completely separate. It seems, it seems separate. weird to me to have two separate render engines. You know? I mean, it is, but. I think that you see that quite a bit. And over time, um, they might converge. Who knows? But I think when you have a company who owns multiple companies inside mm-hmm. of it, it doesn't necessarily always make sense to like merge it all together. Yeah. Um, right. But who knows? Maybe they're waiting for one to become like the clear winner and make mm-hmm. kind of make that yeah. easier for them. So if, like, mm-hmm. let's say Corona becomes like huge and they decide well you know that's the winner let's just let's just move everything into let's put all our chips in that basket which right. they could do yeah. but v-ray still is used a ton in vfx and in arcviz and corona is definitely almost all arcviz at this point yeah yeah so yeah, it's yeah. kind of yeah it's kind of interesting to see what happens there but it's it's i mean who knows maybe they will maybe they'll merge yeah it. sean says they're sharing a lot of features now actually which that's cool Am I not allowed to swear on here? Say somebody. No, you a, can say whatever you okay. want. Okay. Yeah, you can. We we discourage like a ridiculous amount of use of f bombs, but sometimes you get people. <laughs> yeah. You can't control that. Yeah. Okay. I, I Rachel's mean, gonna be on the show in a couple months, and I know that we can't control her. So. Yeah. Okay. You know? <laughs> All right. I'll just. But no, I'll you're keep fine. it. You're I'll fine. keep it tasteful. If it's a natural f bomb, that it's it's okay. If it feels good, just do it. <laughs> it feels That's right. my motto with everything. <laughs> Yeah, we we try. Um, the that leaves that leaves the three big ones we'll talk about. But let's let's start with Arnold. Actually, let's let's talk about where you're at right now with Arnold. Is that you're still like I feel like when yeah people when someone talk says about Arnold, Chad Ashley, think, oh yeah, Chad Ashley, yeah or or vice Chad versa, yeah, Arnold you know? Ashley. Is that still the case? <laughs> um, somewhat, but it's changing a little bit over mm-hmm. over time. You know, so the it. It kind of makes me like kind of sad when I see not as many people using it in C4D and all these people using it in Maya and Max and all that. It's a fantastic renderer. I use it all the time. Um, but I'm not like blind to the fact that it's not as popular as Octane and Redshift. So mm-hmm. that's okay. That's okay. If I, I you know, I'm still going to use it. We're still going to use it internally. But um, I did recently start using Octane again and, yeah, did. and mm-hmm. found that to be like um, stable, more stable than any mm-hmm. of the other GPU renders that, I've, that I use on a daily basis. Mm. And it just delivered what I wanted it to deliver super easy, super fast. And yeah. um, ACES was very easy to implement in there. Uh, Mm -hmm. and so, yeah, so my daily drivers are Octane and Arnold right now. So Octane for kind of like fast turnaround, pretty stuff that I just need Mm -hmm. to put out for the website or whatever. Yeah. And then if it's a deeper dive, uh, material, like we 
we basically uh, prototype all of our materials in Arnold because that's our gold standard of like, mm-hmm. this is as good as we want to make this. Like this looks right. like we, we just yeah. use it because it's like, it looks great. It's easy to build stuff in there. And then that becomes our gold standard for all the other conversions that we do. So mm-hmm. it is what we use. And so I'm using our Arnold for mostly R&D prototyping that sort of thing. And occasionally the marketing image it used to be all the marketing images, but now um, we're kind of bouncing between Octane and Arnold for our marketing images and mm-hmm. doing more in Octane. Yeah. I know uh, we were, we were talking to Nick the other day and he was saying that Ariev showed him a bunch of Octane stuff and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm on board with Octane. <laughs> yeah. He was sold. And that sounds yeah. about right. It's, yeah. it's very pretty. It, it, it is. is. It's yeah. extremely pretty. The hangups that I had with it were stability and features, yeah. and they are yeah. doing more in the past year to address those things than they ever did before. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and you know they're motivated to make it better, uh, and they're really willing to listen and work with us and mm-hmm. all these great things. And I've actually got a list that I plan on compiling of all my gripes about Octane uh, <laughs> that I'm going to compile into a document. There's a, and, there's an Otoy request list specifically on our Slack if you want to. Just oh, throw nice. it In there, yeah. Well, I I'm going to do it kind of behind the scenes because I don't want oh, okay. it to turn into like a you know like a <laughs> thing right. you know. Uh, right. And I respect them, and I want them to know that I, I'm not interested in like throwing out issues to like somehow seem like I know better or something. You know, like I just mm-hmm. want to like I want to make products better for people, yeah, like totally. all yeah. products. So I don't I, think Jules yeah. would be. I don't think Jules would take it that way. I think oh, Jules no, I loves to have the feedback. Yeah, he totally. Knows. He he definitely listens. Uh, their their whole team is all about that. So yeah, and that's been great, and and I love working with companies like that because that's the stuff that you can actually work with them and influence and make changes to the product that are that are better for everybody. But yeah, um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. And the um, I think the 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 biggest kind of like change for me going into Octane was just like trying to get used to uh, their nodes and their sort of like lack of utility nodes and building materials mm-hmm. is still really cumbersome. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm kind of working my way through my list of, of things I'd like to see in there, but yeah. yeah. See, I'm, I, I've just gotten to a point like I, I, I love Octane, you know, it's, it's just, it's so easy to me. It's you the know, bee's to, knees. It's so easy to make something <laughs> look pretty you know, really quick and, you know, call me lame, call me noob, call me whatever you want. It's just what I want. Yeah. I'm vanilla. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> I love it. There, It but, does feel like there is a balance between the super technical and the ease of use right there right. in Octane. And like, that's, I feel like that's why Nick likes it. Yeah. And, and because Nick to me always feels like, you know, he's the type of guy who just wants to dive in and start doing the yeah. work. He's, yeah, yeah. I, you know, he's not, a uh, overly technical person, you know, or wants to di- dive no. into like the crazy, you know, or, or like some Arnold node tree or something yeah. nuts. Like he just wants to make pretty things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it feels right for someone like him. And, and I kind of feel the same way sometimes. It's like, it's like a car that you can fix, right? You can drive <laughs> it, you can use it, but you can get under the hood if you want to. Yeah. Right? yeah. So. Yeah, no, um, yeah. It, it's definitely come a long way, and OSL is helping a ton. And mm-hmm. um, I think that that yeah, it it, for, it appeals to people that just want to like see a result quickly, like yeah, yeah. And, and that's yeah. really what what it comes down to. And honestly, like I, I think that um, that's why it balances out so well for me because if I just need to like jump in and make some eye candy thing for something. Mm-hmm. I can do that very quickly. And if I have something that I need the most sort of like finite control over, I'm mm-hmm. using Arnold for that. So yeah. it's mm-hmm. a, yeah, it's yeah. a great for me. It's a great balance of like, Oh, I, I just need to bang this out really quick and it's going to needs to look photo real. Okay. Octane. Oh, I yeah. need to like dive in and make every single mat perfect so I can comp this and do that. Okay. I'm going to use Arnold. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested to see, uh, how your workflow once, uh, the uh once you're able to get multiple renders into you know 
the uh, octane into the kernel, into the, the drop yeah, down into list. the kernels yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I know um, they're planning on supporting the Arnold standard surface material, mm-hmm. which is the best uh, m- yeah. material, the best Uber material. And so I'm curious about that. I'm, I want to see that happening. I want to see that come to fruition. Um, because yeah, that'd be great if we could author our materials in one sort of standardized format and mm-hmm. they just work, you know, without yeah. a whole lot of yeah. like fuss, that would be amazing. Have you, that's have so you, great for someone like you, who's trying to d- design everything to work with all the things. Yeah. Yeah. You it's, know, it, it's tricky. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> have you tried, have you tried rendering on the render network? No, I I'm still using Pixel Plow like for cool. yeah. everything. Yeah, they're great. You know, yeah. Um I was uh 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 forgot what I was where I was going with that. I was gonna say something along the lines of like, you know, being able to do the multiple passes and stuff once it all comes out and then being able to throw Arnold onto the render network. I think that's gonna be cool. I mean if know, that as yeah. well. Is that something that they're gonna yeah. do? Yeah. yeah. So that's once they the whole, once they get yeah. everything, that's the whole part plan of everything. Once like once they get the Arnold standard uh, standard surface shaders in there, you can basically render Arnold stuff. You know, straight but you're out not of rendering. Orbix. You're not rendering in Arnold. You're rendering in Octane, but things are being essentially well, working. Um, I think I it's th- actually using Arnold. It is you have actually, to have a license. Yeah, you have to have oh, a license do. for Arnold for to be able to run it. But you so can package imagine, it up all in an Orbix and then render it on the render network. Yeah, imagine you're so inside then, so of your project. This, you, and, and, yeah. Why would not? Why not just use Arnold at that point? Like, what? What's the advantage? I I don't know. Like, I, yeah. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm at. I'm like, yeah. this all yeah. sounds good, but it's weird. It's like saying, yeah. like, hey, you can drive a, a Ford, and it'll also be a Porsche. And you're like, yeah. wait, what? Does like, network does that... rendering work with it? Maybe that's, I mean, that could be part of it. Maybe. Right? I don't know. You, you can easily, it's, it, and so, like, let's say you're working on a project, you could flip it from direct lighting to Arnold. Yeah. And then send it to the render network. Honestly, like, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't even care <laughs> you know what i mean like i just want <laughs> yeah. a, i want a good uber material and yeah. all of the the nodes to work properly in, in the way i expect and um really that's it like i i don't really i mean there would be some things that if i could keep it in one scene and one setup that would be pretty useful but yeah yeah i don't know it's interesting I, I, i'm curious to see what that means and how a toy talks about it because there's implications yeah. beyond the tech there's implications to the business that like is interesting like what how do is there a deal that was made between autodesk and a toy like what how does how I does mean, that I work? feel like that's got to be the case you i mean know? they did talk for sure i, I mean it, it's something that they worked out i don't think they just threw in arnold and said hey we can do arnold yeah you know, I yeah i think that's yeah. why there's not redshift in it yet yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, but, look, the, I will say this, like the Arnold team, the devs, the, the, everybody behind the scenes are fantastic people. Like they're really good people and they mm-hmm. they they really do listen. Uh I'm on the beta and they actually, I mean, it's a super professional beta where, you know, mm-hmm. you can put in some, you know, your your requests and they follow it and you know, it's a whole thing. And they're really, really good, and uh, and they want people to use their stuff. So it doesn't surprise me that a toy who's largely kind of similar, and they're mm-hmm. very willing to work with people and promote artists and talk about that stuff. The two of them working together doesn't surprise me. I think that would yeah. be great. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. the fact that you could render a pass. Yeah, from like one say engine, for example, you know, like I wanted another. to, yeah. I wanted to use, you know, Arnold Surface, which is awesome. You know, it's the best. Versus O toys, which I have a hard time getting my head around, you know, like I, it would be great to be able to just do the two together, you know, oh, hell yeah. and then put yeah. it together in one render. It's like and what chocolate Chris and peanut butter. About. Yeah. Right. Crystal in the chat is talking about chocolate. <laughs> the Orbex files. It, everything will be wrapped in that or, Orbex mm-hmm. file. That's what's cool. You know, you could you could exchange these files with other people. Yeah, um, yeah. That are maybe working on other Arnold projects. I mean, that'd be killer. Yeah. That'd be killer. Yeah. Now we haven't talked much about Redshift. Yeah. 
you were like the redshift guy for a while. I don't yeah. know why people you were the like. Arnold guy, I swear but... to God, I put out a couple of <laughs> tutorials, and I'm nah, the guy. You were very evangelical about redshift. Well, that that's true. And because that's okay. At the time when they when yeah. when they came out, I was I was very much excited about a production ready GPU renderer, which there really mm-hmm. wasn't yeah. at the time. Uh, right. In my opinion, at the point at that time, everything was out. You know, Arnold GP wasn't out yet. Octane mm-hmm. was extremely crashy, didn't have a lot of features. And now we're in this new space where we see other people kind of stepping up that game. And mm-hmm. I feel like, um, yeah, and and honestly too, like I I did talk to you guys about it. I think it was at like NAB a long time ago when I was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you guys got to check it out or whatever it was. Um, Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, you know, you, you, the, the, the side effect about talking about rendering is like, people always will just associate you with whatever the last video was, you know? (laughs) Right. And, and so I can't, um, anybody that really knows me that knows Mm -hmm. that I changed my mind about everything all the time, like (laughs) literally 360 on stuff all the time. Yeah. Um, so that's, yeah. So the redshift thing, um, I don't use it as much and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, I find that it is becoming increasingly unstable. Mm-hmm. I find that it is lacking um, the breakneck speed in development that I was hoping for. Yeah. Uh, it still doesn't support a lot of Cinema 4D native stuff. Um, mm-hmm. It I don't like the way it looks most <laughs> of the time. Mm-hmm. The um, renders or the the layout. Like, oh, sorry. The, talking about like well, when I or... say that when I don't like the way something looks, I'm always talking about the output, like the the okay. output of it. Okay. Um, yeah. uh, but you know, like, dude, that could change in three months if they drop some release that's just like killer right. and it does right. all the, you right. know, fixes stability and all that sort of thing. So yeah. it, but you know, it's all about what you what renderer gets the job done. So there's mm-hmm. no real point in like. I'm in a really unique, lucky per- place that I can choose the renderer that I want to use. Right, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people don't. You know, I yeah. get that. A lot of people, oh, I'm freelance. I have to go. I have to do whatever the studios use. And so, yeah. like, don't take what I'm saying as like, well, he said this, and that sucks, and this is. <laughs> don't, dude. Don't. It's like whatever works, whatever gets the job done. I'm just telling you yeah. that what I like and what I like to use. But yeah, yeah and I don't, not everybody I don't can it. afford to buy all of them either and have a subscription. Right. All of them. Absolutely. It's understandable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not it's not cheap. And mm-hmm. but yeah, I don't I don't I don't use it as much anymore, honestly. And and um I, I I'm I'm really bummed, honestly, that they haven't like really taken the development and the integration into the application further. The fact mm-hmm. that material previews are still like a pain and don't really yeah. they don't work and they they still don't support a lot of the native they support noises but not all of the native noise features that Arnold and Octane do which is like what that's interesting mm. yeah there's a lot of little things that there's these little integrations that are still not there um that I wish were so that's really kind of like driven me to this point I was kind of at, I was using it uh, the way that I'm kind of using, I was using it as like, I just need to get something out fast. And like, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm not really super set on, it doesn't have to look completely photo real. I don't need to like get all that crazy. It just needs to be done fast. Mm-hmm. And I was using it in that sort of way. And then when Octane 2020.2 came out and it was fast and stable and looked great, I was like, well, mm-hmm. Do I need to use that really that much? Yeah. Maybe I yeah. don't. <clears throat> so it just kind of, um, yeah. But we're still, just to, you know, I want everybody to know, we're still developing for all three. We're still mm-hmm. making tutorials and training for all mm-hmm. three. So don't th- don't take mm-hmm. anything I'm saying here and think, well, right. Grayscale right. Gorilla is not going to do Redshift anymore. That is right. not the case. Okay, that is not. Yeah, the so case. many studios are still using Redshift right now. Yeah. Absolutely, Big already sign. been chewed. Still full Redshift. Yeah. you know, I don't and, see them changing. Yeah, for yeah. sure, and and that's why you know you have to do what you have to go with what people are using. Me personally, I didn't have a reason to use mm-hmm. Redshift that much. I wasn't working for a lot of clients that needed it. Yeah, it, it it was working for a lot of clients to where you get to choose your own engine. So I would gravitate toward octane and i did learn some redshift but but i know that like some places are just 100 percent redshift mm-hmm. yeah yeah so, the, it's become it's sort of like 
I, and I, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the fact that it's they can studios can bundle it with cinema, and that's a, yeah. that's yeah. a cost saving measure. So yeah, mm-hmm. I don't think uh, I think some of them picked it because you know it made a lot of sense to them production features, GPU, all that sort of thing. But I do yeah. think a lot of it has to do with that that bundling, which is yeah. smart. It's a smart yeah. Because if you're looking at if so, we needed to because we're scaling up for a project, you know. And I needed to get another uh, C4D license temporarily, you know. And so it's like if you're looking at it, bundling. And I needed Red uh, Red Giant. I needed all their products, you know. Yeah. When you're talking about bundling those two together, it's basically, you know, it's kind of like you get Red Ship for free. You know. Yeah, it's a good bundaroo. It is a good bundaroo. Yeah, Yeah. it's. um, I think if Red Shift just did a few really kind of core things that mm-hmm. I would, you know, feel a lot better about it. And um, integration needs to be really brought up to the level of, you know, the fact that that um, a, a renderer owned by Autodesk has better integration than a renderer owned by the native app is right. kind of crazy. Mm. Like, that's yeah. a little crazy. Yeah. 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 I'm yeah. with you there. <clears throat> Have we covered all the render engines? Not all of them, but that's enough. Well, yeah. You you render? <laughs> Did render? I haven't messed with you. I haven't messed with you render in a while. I was I was I was gonna jump on that because I was thinking about uh, like, hey, what if I want to do a cartoon, you know, and I want to just render it in real time, you mm-hmm. know, like how great would that be, you know, being able to render a whole cartoon in real time, just get it animated, and then boom, you're ready to go. Yeah. But about the same time I was thinking about doing that, you know, we came out with the the uh uh unreal training and it's like why wouldn't i just do it in, Un- in unreal yeah you know? well Unreal's... because you have to use unreal yeah <laughs> right but <laughs> you know oh my god that interface but Ooh. yeah the uh the uh i i don't know the the thing that i the problem i have with all real-time engines and um i if a brigade or redshift rt can fix this they're you know it's going to be great like uh, the 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 biggest problem I have is the anti aliasing. You know, you get mm. these, and you'll notice it when you're playing video games, and they're on the highest cinematic setting. You'll still get some weird aliasing issues yeah. with the lights and stuff like that. It's just and the reflections, the and shadows. Like, it just doesn't feel yeah. doesn't feel. You know, it's approximated. Photo real. It's approximated, yeah. and you know, yeah. like if that's what if that's good enough for what you're outputting, then yeah, dude, sure, right, yeah. Um, but yeah, for I'm I'm watching that space pretty closely, but it's not to the point where I'm like, "Wow, like that that looks great," and it was not painful. That's, right. That's really the t- the two factors for me. I'm right. lazy, so it's like it's got to look amazing and not be like super painful. Right. And the brigade, like just being able to switch it to a kernel, you know, just yeah. I mean, that's I, gonna be that'll I, be killer. I personally yeah. think that near real time is gonna beat real time. And that's just yeah. my my take yeah. on it. So for those that don't know what that means, is like real time equals game engine. Near real time mm-hmm. means like you know Redshift RT or Brigade mm-hmm. or whatever the renderer mm-hmm. comes out with for their like near real time experience. Right. Because the the fact is like we were talking about before the show, you have like an insane deadline coming up and a lot of work that you need to chug, chug through. So. You will. You want to stay in your native app. You you don't want to jump around. Yeah. You don't want to like export and cache and all that yeah. shit. Like you don't want to deal with it. So like if you can be near real time and a render that maybe in a real time engine would take, let's just say, I don't know, what are they like a, like a fraction of a second, right? Like yeah, one, I mean, let's just say, let's say like they're three four seconds, right? In right a, in a real time engine for all writing the, to disk is the is yeah, the hardest and part. you're rendering yeah. out twice the resolution so you can down sa- down sample it to get the anti aliasing yeah. that you're talking about all that all that stuff yeah. right and then you get a near real time engine that maybe takes twenty percent thirty percent longer but you get to stay in engine you get to stay in app and all your materials right. work everything works yeah. like mm-hmm. you're willing to pay that twenty thirty percent right yeah. Yeah, totally. Oh, for sure. Especially if you've already got a farm or whatever. I mean, Brigade running on all these 3090s yeah. at this point yeah. is, yeah. is going to be ridiculous. I'm still using uh, Pixel Plow, and um, what was I doing? I, I, I'm still using Pixel Plow, and I'm so cheap that I'm using the CPU 
pixel plow because nobody's of using Arnold? it. Yeah, because nobody's That's using funny. it. Oh. Like you can go on really? there and like, I mean, it's now that I'm saying this, I just blew the effing lid off the <laughs> secret. But um, right. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be like look deving in. This was before I started using Octane more, but I was look deving in Arnold GPU and then sending it to Pixel Plow CPU farm, and my renders were yeah. like you know twenty dollars or whatever it is, and I'm like, right. this is like, how is nobody doing this? This is crazy. Right. Right. How do you think that render farms will be will do this in is a like really the good next question. ten years? Yeah. Not well. Not yeah. well. It is probably not a good long term business. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I'm even interested. on CPU. See the, I mean I'm talking about specifically for our industry. There might be mm-hmm. right. Uh, and you know, a, a going forward, a need for data center rendering and all that. But like, imagine like, I know that I try to not put it to a render farm whenever I can because mm-hmm. I just don't want to deal with you know gathering up everything and uploading right. and hoping right. that it doesn't. I'm not missing something uh, and all those things that I think you know people and companies go out of their way to make that easier for people. And Pixelplow does a great job, but. I always would prefer if I had a machine that could render it out overnight and I could go to bed and it'd be done in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, wouldn't we all want to just do that? But I see. So I don't mind so much. I I get what you're saying as far as gathering everything and then having to download them. It's kind of a pain, you know, I've been sending a lot of stuff over to render you know, and yes, exporting out to the animated Orbex file and then uploading it and hoping you get the everything correct, especially if you're using like X particles or, you know, Turbulence FD or something, you know, hoping you get that is a pain. Uh, but being able to like basically it goes out to a 100 different nodes all at once and you see all those frames rendering all at the same time, mm-hmm. you know, versus like it's just chugging along going. I I, I don't know, like I've. I really enjoy being able to just get it back like that. You yeah, know? no, that's great, and that's I yeah. I agree, and, and even and it, I we've got four I've got four thirty nineties here, you know, and I can still render quick, but sometimes I'm just like I need it I need it now, you know, because yeah. I got too much work going on. Yeah. That's the know. point I was going to make is like a yeah. lot of people, um, you're doing multi shot sequences, you're doing multiple jobs at the same time. Mm-hmm. Your machine can't have any downtime. Like you cannot have any time where your machine is rendering and you're uh, not working. Right. You need to work. Especially during the day. Yeah, you got to set know, up a shot, work yeah. hours. kick it off to the farm, set up a shot, mm-hmm. kick it off to the farm. So it it really is kind of like, I think. I think that there's going to be a, a market for the farm that's as long as it's easy and simple and all mm-hmm. that sort of thing. But I think as people retire older machines and they refresh machines every two, three, four years, whatever it is, I yeah. think people that are tech minded like yourselves are going to take yep. those old machines and start basically building a farm out of them. That's kind of what that's we've what been we're doing. doing. Yeah. Yeah. I just yeah. wish that yeah, there was keep, an easier yeah. way to set that up because. I've set up Deadline and I've set up Team Render, and they're both a pain in the ass. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah, and I, have you used network rendering on Octane? Yeah. It is the simplest, easiest two-second setup you've ever you're done. You're stuttery on our side. I don't know. If yeah, you're a little stuttery. Oh, I am? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I'll switch over to this. Yeah, have same. you used have you used uh, network rendering on Octane? How about, how about that? No, is that much better I, for you? I, I have, it's okay. I have simple. not... It only takes, so I had to upgrade, I upgraded to 2020, R2 something, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. the newest version. So I had to update all my render nodes and stuff. It's literally just, it took me five minutes to do everything. You You hit a couple buttons and it's just there and you can see them on the network. There's no port forwarding thing. That's great. That router. I'll show it to you. I think if you solve that problem and you make it that easy, then Mm -hmm. it's kind of a no brainer for people. And that becomes a huge feature for Octane because that if they, in their marketing, they can say, you can set up your, your, you don't have to be an IT specialist to set up a render farm. You just install Mm -hmm. it, hit go. Like if that's really how easy it is. Then yeah. that's like a huge, huge selling point, especially in the next two, three years when people have, you know, 1080 TIs that they're retiring as they bring in the 3090s mm-hmm. to be able to use those uh, to render on. Like that's value add right there. 
make that yeah. make that yeah. a big part of the marketing as far as I'm and concerned. The, the great part about the the Octane network rendering is being able to like when you're in your live viewer being able to use all those other computers as well. Yeah, you in know? your live viewer. In your live yeah, viewer. Yeah, so that and reminds then me also I used to uh, love rendering doing that. single frames using all those other machines, yeah. you know, when you're doing a yeah. sequence versus team viewer where it's like, "Oh, I'll take this chunk. Okay, you take this chunk." You yeah. know. Oh yeah, that's we used to have that with V-Ray um back mm-hmm. in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, not in the IPR, but in in single frame, you can do that right. in Arnold as well. But yeah, it it it's That'd be great, man. If they if they make it that easy, and um, hopefully you know that continues that to be easy, then that's great. I think the thing that I love to see a toy do is um, simplify their purchase experience. I think uh, mm-hmm. their their entire mm-hmm. like purchase experience is extremely confusing. It is. Uh, uh, I it yeah is. yeah. I I have a feeling they know that because even. Even me, who's been using Octane since version two, when I had to upgrade my license, I'm like, I, I don't know which one I buy. Which one do I buy? You yeah, I know. No, it, yeah. it, 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 I think that uh, that happens with companies like that that are like so focused on the tech and maybe not as focused on um, the user experience from a purchase standpoint. But mm-hmm. I mean, if they made that entire process much more streamlined and all of this network rendering was like just working really simply and easily yeah then that's that's awesome man like that'd be a killer and be a hard thing for for any of them to beat i think yeah uh cristobal in the chat said if you send your project a render and leave your hmm. pc as a node operator you win money which is true actually yeah, right now true. so uh, uh God, and I'm, I'm, so high. I'm pretty sure this is going to change soon. They're going to have to change the yeah, the, have the ratio or whatever. But right now, you can go on to render site and buy render tokens for 25 cents per render token, and that'll get you like a 100 octane bench or whatever. Now, if you're set up as a, a a renderer on their side, you get paid back in render tokens, but it's not 25 cents because they're actually worth like two dollars right now. Hmm. Yeah. So, so it's the loophole. Yeah, it's it's a loophole for Which, right now, you know. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I'll have to look into that more. I just, you know, yeah. I don't, it's, I don't it's follow been cool. the render like, thing. I, I set my third yeah. computer, my third one, the twenty series ones, to just go uh, in the past, like because the uh, render tokens have gone up so much. I'm I'm like at a thousand dollars for the past two months of rendering. So, but know? how much are you spending in power? Like, what is that costing? I you? don't know. I'm not worried about it. <laughs> well, I'm re- it, it like does... honestly, I'm really not that worried about. The, I got the, the power, power from my neighbor's house. I budget. Yeah. <laughs> I run I an mean, extension I, cord through the lawn. Exactly. I, I, like, uh, yeah. Our house is uh, it's it's new. It's only like you know three years old or whatever. So it's got really good heating. It's got the and cooling and stuff. My energy bill is never over a couple hundred bucks ever and that's yeah during even the when summer, you're rendering when you're you know, doing cryptocurrency mining yeah. and all of that it still evens out to where you make more money yeah running them i mean than, if yeah. you look at it right now so if and and i was doing the math so if you do like a quarter at a uh, 100 octane bench right and my other computer is it's at like a 500 right so i would be making what it's a it's a quarter per hundred octane bench so five hundred or one hundred octane bench per hour, right? So multiply that by five, I make a dollar twenty five per hour or whatever. I guess is that right? That's that doesn't seem right. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. All I know is that if I did oh, wait, wait, that, wait, wait. my whole okay, house so would be two hundred degrees. It costs a dollar twenty five yeah. in render credits to use mine, but I get five render credits right back at at two dollars each. I'm making right. ten dollars an hour just setting, letting my computer run right, and that's just on my twenty series uh, uh, computer at. You know, with two twenty seventy supers, that's a five hundred octane bench. My thirty nineties, my dual thirty nineties, they're a thirteen forty. So I'm make I'm making like fifty dollars an hour. You know, if they had thirty series running, if I but ran, they don't that, have thirty series. You got to specify don't yet. No. It yet. Yeah, not yeah, yet. Yeah. But if I had those running twenty four hours a day, three sixty five, like say for example, Arnold, you know, gets in there and they're able to send it out to all the render nodes and people are able to get render credits from rendering these jobs. It's like you're looking at half a million dollars a year if they were running 24-7. Yeah. 
Yeah, you did the math on that the other <laughs> I day. Did. I don't know about I that. Did make... Is that real? That is real. So, like, okay, let's do the math, right? I mean, you don't uh, have but to you're do converting the math. We'll, we'll do a 1,300. You, yeah, we'll I don't do a 1,300. Have, I, I, all right? I mean, like, who, who 1300 wants 1,300 to... times 2 plus 500, right? Well, 1,300 times 2 plus 500. So my total octane bench for all my computers is a 3,100. All right? So This is a theoretical if. This is if a theoretical if. Yeah. There is no way there is that much jobs that it would require my systems to be running 24-7. That is not the case. But if there were enough renderers going into the render network, you know, and everyone was using the baths. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, and everyone's oh, yeah. and, and they implement 3090s, which they don't right. have. So, at the um, uh, so it's it's basically 31 times two, so that's 62 dollars an hour running all my machines per hour, right? Hmm. Times 24 hours, that's 1488 dollars per day, right? Times 365, that's 543 thousand dollars if but they are you were basing running. this on the current price of render i'm basing token? it on the current price of what a render token is worth you know versus what people are paying for it so you know you get a 100 it can't bench. possibly stay at that it, it no there's no way it's, it's totally unstable right you know but like that, yeah. i will say i will say yeah exactly impulse says you know their render node has been completely idle for the past three days there's not there's not that there are way more (laughs) clients than there are work going in for uh, right now right but that could theoretically theoretically you get all these other render engines you know going at the same time look it could be very profitable for a render farm to just only render render jobs you know yeah Maybe I'm just I got to I got to say I I went to Uniswap and and changed some of my ETH into yep. a render token uh the other day before it like doubled. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I'm pretty happy with I that. Bought, so. I bought I bought $4,000 in render tokens this past weekend. I mean it's it's <laughs> Sounds like you're all in. I am all in. I am all in on the rent. <laughs> like I, I was, I was a little iffy, you know. And then I started, you know, doing render jobs and getting paid back in render tokens. And I'm like, okay, this is this is a pretty good deal right here, you know. Like you make more money off of rendering other people's jobs than you do of actually mining Ethereum. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's probably true. Yeah, I don't. So, I think the time to mine is past for for most of us here. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think back anyway. to 2010 when I could have mined Bitcoin and my friend oh, told me to do you it. You can't do that to yourself because yeah. like, it hurts no. too much. I know. It it hurts. And I was like, what are you talking about, dude? That's some crazy shit. Like, get out of here. Yeah. And now here I am. Yeah. I mean, even if you yeah. hadn't mined it, if you had just talked to someone and said, hey, I'll buy 100 Bitcoin from you for $1,000, right? I yeah. mean, you'd have... Yeah. You'd be a millionaire by now, and you'd be able to afford some of that people artwork. Right, right. <laughs> well, Cristobal says, you know, just consider that when the three thousand, the th- you know, three thousand series or whatever, yeah. uh, when they are compatible, the work a token gives you, yeah, will change. I'm so sure it's all. It, it's going change. to change. It's just, but it's yeah. in in my opinion, it's gonna, it's still gonna be more lucrative than you know mining, mining. mining yeah, you know. For and sure. it's like, and I think that's great because, it, in in my opinion, it's artists supporting other artists. You know, you're helping other artists render their frames, which is it's something that we would do something. anyway. You know, the energy is actually going toward something besides just right getting a token. Just it's, yeah. it's actually doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, I mean, if yeah, I'll, I I don't see myself going through all the rigmarole of setting all that up, but it's interesting. It's yeah. not too hard. You just send him your wallet idea and then hit up Patty in the Slack channel. But I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Maybe um, I'll dust off my old 4980 Ti system. Dude, the 4980 Ti's, you can sell those on eBay for 250 bucks a piece right now. Yes, you can. Really? I sold I, I sold five yeah. of mine. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Just be I'm just, I'm a weary lazy of those eBay individuals. You know, like You're I, what? I'm a lazy individual. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I just I like to too. like do my work and then not do work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly I'm doing work though. <laughs> <clears throat> and we got some great uh, like suggestions on other engines to cover here, you know. Um what do we got? Standard render, pro render. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, I couldn't EP. tell if you were joking yeah. and now I can see. Yeah. I you know, yeah. I still I, I still jump to standard all the time. 
I do. Like I use them. Well, standard. I use yeah, them for really simple, like used, so. object buffer passes. You know, if I'm not doing, if I'm doing, uh, 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 what you call it? If I'm not doing any motion blur, you know, mm-hmm. or if I if I need like luminant objects, you know, those will render render way faster in standard versus rendering them right. in octane or something like that. You know, A quick buffer pass. Yeah, yeah. If I'm doing screens, you know, I'll render all of them in uh, in standard render and then just comp them. Yeah, you could also just Easy. spit out an alembic file and bring them into Fusion. I don't use Fusion. Ooh. I, I I would like to. I would like to. <laughs> I like the way you said that. <laughs> you know what? And so, so here's here's something that's that is annoying. Have you ever used uh, uh, Red Giant Mirror? I think it is M I R. Oh yeah, a long, long, long time ago. Oh yeah, so, yeah, yeah. What's cool is that you can export out a like a uh, an object, a three D object from Cinema, and then bring it in. Which is way cool, you know, using mirror and then you just throw the textures on there, which it works. It works great, you know, but then you bring a C40 camera in and it just doesn't work like it doesn't match the same. That's that's annoying. That's you know, it's like you guys are the same company. It should work fluidly like that or any 3D camera should be able to work fluidly like that. I would love to be able to see them. You know, because Mir was fast. It was really fast. You know, when I used it, I'd love to be able to see them, like, implement that somehow, bringing in, like, a C4D uh, project file and, you know, extracting all the stuff and being able to choose if you want Mir or not. I don't know. It'd be cool. Hmm. Well, you can, right now, just go open up a scene, any scene, and just, like, hit that uh, cache to Alembic, right-click, I think it's, it is now. Mm-hmm. And you can just mm-hmm. open that Alembic file in Fusion. And it's just like your camera's there, everything's there. Like the That's, geo's there. Yeah. Then you just throw like a white material on your screen or whatever, or even like, you know, throw a, whatever graphic you're throwing on the screen in there. Render that yeah. out in two seconds. You can just leave it live in your comp even. It doesn't even yeah. matter. See, I need, so you, I need you, know, you to show me. To yeah, I need, you, yeah. I need you to show me how to do that. Oh, because so the easy. amount of comping that I do in After Effects and how much of a pain it is, you know, it's like... Yeah, if you're I doing feel, a lot of 3D comping, then yeah. you should definitely be using Fusion. If you're doing right. a lot of right, like right, right. motion design, oh, vector animations, titles, mm-hmm. like that sort of thing, I don't recommend using Fusion for that. But if yeah. you're like doing what you were just saying, dude, it's yeah. perfect. It's perfect yeah. for that. Yeah. Cool. Um, the question about Blender, where we think Blender is going with these render engines. Do you, What do you think the best Blender render engine is? I think... Just about everything is available in Blender, right? So, mm. uh, Redshift just... isn't yet. Arnold Redshift is not. Isn't. Yeah, Arnold is not. Okay, think, well, uh, it's not as. Yeah, I think just Octane really. You get Octane. Octane cycles and uh, Eevee. I don't get how the free render engine stuff works in Blender. Like how how are these engines making a profit by putting? Well, cycles their stuff is, for is free? just made. Um, yeah, it's made by Blender. It's made it's it's part of that Blender mm-hmm. foundation, so it's it's not yeah. really a thing, but um I think you if you if you're going to buy Octane for Blender, you're just buying Octane. Like there's there's Isn't it's it not free. Uh, it's free. It's free for Blender. What? Why yeah, would they do that? Yeah, that's what I don't get. <laughs> I, oh my god. It, I think it's I I mean, I think well, Why? it's free up to uh I believe to to uh Two nodes. Uh, yeah. Oh, two, okay. Well, two, okay. Well, that makes sense. Two, okay. No, so two it's not free. Cards. It's not free. Right. It's free yeah. up to two graphics cards. And right. then after right. that, you'll need to pay but for it. But you could dive in and you can mm-hmm. start messing with it right away. You know, yeah. that's, that's a great I was point for say, somebody like, who doesn't... Yeah. That's insane if it's like straight up free. Like, that's, yeah. that's pretty crazy. But yeah, that makes a lot yeah. more sense. I get it. Um, oh, if free one, one, GPU. one GPU. There, there you go. go. So that that, yeah. that makes a hell of a lot more sense. I was about to be like, I need to call Jules yeah. right now. Right. Um, dude, you need <laughs> to switch need over to, to Blender. Can we just like talk? <laughs> yeah. You guys are crazy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Like the whole, I think Blender in itself is a bigger, probably a whole other conversation and podcast, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the 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 octane. So there's all those different places you can get it for free. It's not just yeah, Blender. It's, Blender, it's, uh, uh, and, like, Unity, says, Unreal, Daz Studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. VJ. Um, Basically, if if the application is free, 
you, you don't have to pay for Octane for it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a for that limited drug. seat. For the, for yeah. the one yeah. GPU. It is. Yeah. yeah. And, and OS X, I haven't had a, uh, a chance to try it on the M1, but I've got the new... I haven't even talked about that. I do have yeah. the, a new uh, MacBook Pro. It's the first Mac that I've bought since since 2012. Mm-hmm. But... Um, it's uh, it's supposed to be good on there. I haven't had a chance to try Octane on the M1 to just see what it's like. Yeah, I'm curious but about that too. Like and if to. you <laughs> if you're an M1 uh, Mac Octane uh, user, hit me up. We're always looking for beta testers for our stuff to make sure it works. Cool. So, yeah, because that's something that that we're seeing a lot of people t- asking about that and whether mm-hmm. or not it works. And I know if the second a, a decent new iMac uh, comes out or the a Apple Silicon Mac Pro, I know Nick is just going to be like, later, <laughs> I'm yeah. using that yeah, now. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I think he's waiting pretty hardcore for that. And uh, yeah, because yeah, he's still not vibing on the PC thing. But See, I don't... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, is you get like a an iMac, like a Pro iMac or something like that. I mean, and then just network render but the network rendering isn't working in between mac and pc at the moment yeah you know? I, I imagine that as, would be pretty hard to. Do. as soon as it does like as soon as it's one for one and you can you can just i mean i've i've considered it you know just working on a mac and then uh just having all my pcs as render nodes you know right right especially if they can work fluidly between each other I'm all yeah, about using question, whatever's yeah. best, you know, like whatever works yeah. best. I want to use that. Best. That's the thing. And if right. they come out yeah. with like a, a Mac Pro Silicon, uh, Apple Silicon machine, and it is with if it's a marginal difference between what I would do on a PC and mm-hmm. I get the UI and I get iMessage on my computer when I want to like, text my kids or whatever, I don't right. have to like, mm-hmm. go to a sister device. And if the setup is easy, all of those things. And it looks great, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would, I would do it. Wait, are you on an iPhone now? I am. Yeah. Oh, look at you. I, yeah. Well, I was going to show you my watch, Came but I around. don't have, I, I, I forgot to put it on because. Here's my Fitbit. I that, think, uh, I, I think the Apple because watch is the crap. battery lasts more than a day. I hate but, it. Yeah. I hate it. Oh, you're out like, of your, you're out of your mind. So you're it, uh, mind. Uh, it was annoying because it, it'd Fitbit be like, oh, you're so close to closing your ring. And I was like, you just, you just, you just gave me that notification and took me away from what I'm doing. So I turned off all the activity stuff, and then it would say, oh, you need to stand up. And I was like, you just took me away from what I was focusing on. My ADD is already bad enough, so I had to turn off the standing thing. You know, I turned off all my Slack notifications. So really, it was just a watch at that point. Well, that's not its fault. That's your fault. <laughs> it's my fault. You that's your fault. For not being able to multitask. Like, that's, that's not it. Like, it's doing everything that you thought you wanted it to do right, until right, it right. did it for you and then you're like well actually i don't really want this yeah, yeah and yeah, so yeah, yeah it's more yeah but yeah i switched back um i went i was a you know pixel guy since pixel one and then yeah. um mm-hmm. i just noticed the 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 pixel team a lot of the pixel team original team left and the hardware went downhill and the software experience started mm-hmm. going a little downhill and that's yeah. just when uh, iOS 14 announced and widgets and the new UI and all that sort of thing. And mm-hmm. then the new iPhone with the flat edges, which I'm a huge fan of. I was like, yeah. it's time for a change. Like, I'm going to switch back. And I always, I needed a, uh, an activity watch. I needed that um, uh, just for the health stuff. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it. I'm going to give it a shot. So I went all in. I went iPhone. Uh, Apple Watch. I even got an iPad Pro, which is what I do all my Slack and everything. So nice, yeah, isn't me too. it? Oh, it's dude, great. it's the best. And so, like, yeah. I've been, and then I even like went as far as like I dusted off my old Apple TV, plugged that in, and like <laughs> did the whole thing. <laughs> and yeah. I gotta say, you know, they nail the freaking experience, man. They, they nail do. it. They do. Yeah, they nail it. Except the battery life, man. How how long does it take for you to wear down your battery on your watch? I've my, never worn it down. I I've never worn mine down either. Uh, and uh, mine well, how is often mine do you is have the to charge second it every charge. night. Every night. Yeah, I charge it you every night. You have to charge your watch every night. Yeah, yeah you go to you bed, take you put it, it on you your put nightstand, it on the little stand, and then you're good. Well, do you want to wear your watch through the night? 
That would yeah. drive me crazy. Yeah, to, to to track my sleep. Absolutely. Eh. I don't. I'm not a sleep tracker. Guy. I track all that. Yeah. I track my sleep, and my oxygen levels when I'm asleep. And I just all I just go, know yeah. I have bad sleep. That's I think the way it is. You, I, think, I just expect. I get what you're saying it. though. Right, like if you have you sleep apnea or if you have like a sleep yeah. health problem for sure. And I think that. Um, that there's even a newer one that I saw being hinted at that uh, is going to be able to do even more health monitoring type stuff beyond um, blood oxygen. But yeah, I, yeah. I think the newer ones, you can, you charge them like every couple of days and they have new low power modes and all this kind yeah. of stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's always a price to pay for that stuff. You know, like it's going to be, it takes power to do that stuff. I used See, to have I, an I, Apple watch and I don't anymore. I have a Fitbit watch and I love the fact that I don't have to charge my watch Every night, I can charge it once a week. Yeah, That's I don't great. mind. Yeah, I, yeah. See, what I I've got, I bought this little stand that has um, it's it's wireless charging, charging wireless charging for my phone. Right, it's got the, the iPods, thing for my your I, uh, yeah, yeah, my AirPods. Called? Right, AirPods. Yeah. So charging for the AirPods and for the watch as well. I just take everything out of my pocket, put, put them all up. Yeah, me bed. too. Me too. It's yeah. great. I, I don't know, man. Like to me, the 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 writing was on the wall with the Pixel and Android not having a good watch, not really knowing what they were doing with their hardware, and then all the privacy stuff that I started thinking about more and more of lately. And I mm-hmm. was like, you know what? I'm just gonna try this other thing, and it's been great, man. I love it, and the fact that they really pay attention to design. Uh, as yeah. a designer, I very much appreciate the attention to detail and all that with their hardware and and software. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether I would like the widgets or not, but I I, I really like them. Dude, they're like, great. I like being able to see my weather and my stocks like immediately. Oh hell you yeah, know? hell yeah. So yeah, I've got. Uh, I'll show you this setup that I've got. Let me go. I don't know if this is going to come through or not, but. <laughs> You gotta have like you know your your stocks and your widget sets right. set your up. Stonks, your right. stonks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. Their widgets are better yeah. looking than Androids, which I'm sure a lot of people will be pissed that I say that, but they mm-hmm. are. They look better. Yeah. Yeah. Any other? Uh, we're gonna switch gears. Any other render stuff? I think the only other thing I see is just you know Blender and Octane and for mo- Blender and Octane compared to like. Octane and Cinema 4D. I, mean, I think we already kind of yeah. addressed that, but I mean, and in the chat, the people in the chat kind of agree too. It's the integration of Octane inside of Cinema 4D is yeah. mountains in comparison. I think, I think a majority of the Octane users are either using it standalone or using it in C4D. You it's know? just so great in yeah. C4D. There's you got it's just built you, you got very us well. and David Aryev who have been pushing it for you know since version two, right? That, where it's like okay. Whatever. Yeah. I would like to see uh, everybody get into the standard of the the node material the node material editor in Cinema, the new one. Oh, um, yeah, I, I would love to see that. I don't know why that development I seems think, to have halted. I think Amit like built his own, you know, his own uh, uh, node node viewer or whatever. I think they're implementing that into all mm. the other versions of Octane. You know, right. yeah, but I'm I'm talking like I want I want to use that native right. node material editor uh, that they yeah. built because it is nice and it and it mm-hmm. just like it just seems like they built it and then nobody's using it, right? Well, of course we're coming up on uh, you know April or whatever, and so like on the last uh, stream, Paul hinted at something. Mm-hmm. You know, he said something about uh, about April. So I, I feel like maybe a lot of people right now are just kind of holding off. Yeah. For announcements. That, <laughs> I was, you know, I, I was mentioning to Dave the other day. I said, you know, we we got this one big project that we're working on. And it's like if they come out with a subscription version, a new one, it's like, oh, well, I guess we can't move over <laughs> until this <laughs> yeah, whole project. It's so hard done, to upgrade. You know, yeah. it's really hard. Yeah, you it don't want to upgrade hard. in the middle of a project. Yep, I get it. I get it. I'm I'm one of those because you know doing development, we have to be on the latest versions of everything. So uh, yeah, but I understand. yeah for sure. I I understand how it is in production. You don't want to if it's working. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. 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 Yeah. Speaking of which, let's let's switch gears to some GSG talk for a little bit. Talk yeah, about totally. what's going on there. Uh, what have you What have you been up to? What are you working on? What's mm-hmm. the latest news? 
It's crazy. Uh, we've been extremely busy uh, working on Plus, getting Plus uh, going, and adding all this new stuff to Plus, both from the way the stuff is delivered to new products, new training, all that sort of thing. We redid the website. Um, I mean, there's a lot of moving parts. But uh, the most recent thing is that we dropped uh, Car Paints, which is an amazing set of yeah. Car Paints. Um, we dropped a new edition of Area Light Maps, Volume 2. We dropped a new set of Surface Imperfection smudges. And we cool. dropped uh, some new training on car rendering. So that's kind that's of the sweet. latest thing. But the car paints I'm really proud of. I think they turned out really, really good. And um, we were lucky enough to have uh, OSL be implemented into Redshift just as we kind of finished our flake system that we custom made for our car paints. And so cool. um, mm. you're getting like procedural, really nice flake system for, uh, yeah. for car paints, which is That's a huge, cool. like I didn't want to do car paints unless we could deliver a procedural based flake in all three renderers that looked as close as we could to to yeah. to each other which right. is like really hard to do so yeah and and who's developing all of that are you are, do you kind of head that process now like how does that all work so i hired um gosh it must have been uh maybe a little over like, maybe it's a year and a half now i can't remember it might be just a year i can't remember but um i brought on uh sean astrom i don't know if you know mm -hmm. sean yeah. but he's fantastic yeah, of course. So he's in the chat. Yeah, Sean's in the chat. Um, he has been helping tremendously uh, to help build these assets. So I'm I'm in more of a uh, leadership role, but I still get my hands dirty um, on quite a bit of stuff. But yeah, so he's he's in there. His day to day is like making killer assets for Plus. Mm -hmm. Cool. And, and what about OSL? Are you having to like get someone specifically to take care of OSL? Because I can't imagine that that's something that most everyday people know how to program. No, we we have uh, artists and and people that we bring on for specific things like that, and because mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how to program an OSL, so we yeah. just kind of work with them, and uh, essentially they become freelance developers for us. And yeah. and yeah, we 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 are. Uh, if you know OSL and you want to be, you want to join our roster of freelance developers, hit me up. Cool. Now, a couple of people in here are talking about uh, like uh, Carlos says the new GSG Plus is awesome. Richard says I was on the fence when I bought Plus, but it's so worth it for me. Uh, there's I been some so. changes recently. <laughs> recently, I I saw uh, something that came out. Uh, over email, I think you did an announcement the other day. Was that last week? Maybe I don't know. I think it was last week. <laughs> um, it, it was uh, it was referring to a couple different things. Uh, number one, I think tutorials, like classic tutorials. Oh yeah, and mm -hmm. then also something about the the way that plugins are going to work moving forward as far as purchasing and and support. Yep, yeah, yeah. So we've been. Um, pretty heads down on getting plus to where we wanted it to be and where we think it should be. And it's getting there now. And obviously we, we, it's a moving target. We're always improving and making it better, all those sort of things. But the side effect of that is we went a little silent on the tutorial front and we had to move a lot of stuff off of Vimeo and we weren't sure where to put it and all that sort of right. thing. So we're now in the process of remastering a, it's just a ton of classic tutorials and stuff that people have watched on Vimeo for years and remastering it, putting proper heads and, or, you know, intro outros, uh, new mm -hmm. thumbnails, getting them up on YouTube and letting them live there permanently. So that's a huge undertaking. We have thousands of videos. Like I'm not even joking. Mm -hmm. There are so yeah. many that now, um, uh, we have the ability and the time to kind of organize all that and get that back out this year. So I'm stoked about that. So you're going to see a lot more tutorials. Yeah. In fact, I just dropped a, an Octane tutorial on YouTube last week, I think. It was like my first... That was the last yeah. one you did. Everyone's going to think you're an Octane guy now. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I love that. I, lo- I lo- actually love playing like that and just like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm doing this. And the next week I'll do something completely different. Anyway, but yeah, yeah so we're, we're getting back into that. In fact, I have an Aces, uh, an Octane Aces tutorial coming out next. Cool, cool. Uh, which is like, so it's a real quick little video. When you uh, when you do the Octane Aces, when when you're doing that, are you going into like post production onto it or like no no you know? it's just strict strictly five minutes get aces okay. set up in octane i don't go through it'd, the whole it'd be cool to see roll. you know bringing it into somewhere else yeah i, don't know I, I do that you're in even plus interested in doing that oh yeah yeah there you I go i do that in plus so oh, okay. if yeah. you're a plus well, member you, you can dive a little deeper into the whole aces thing and learn about you know comping footage that was shot on different formats and all that sort of thing um are these are yeah. these remasters that you have are they like um like what if what if they're so old that it's like you know Cinema 4D 11.5? Like, <laughs> yeah, how then do you we, deal with that? I, I think <laughs> that they just go way further down in the priority list of like putting them anywhere. Right. Um, yeah. So they just kind of like, like come on, we need the Seven Up Cherries one. I was going to say that specifically. We need the Seven Up Cherries. I don't know where yeah. that one is. I'll have to look into that one. I feel like I've seen other people request that too. It's and just that, a, a that might be right? Isn't that what you use? Just attractors? That might be in. Just... That might be one of the ones that we moved into Plus. I I'll have to check, but it might mm-hmm. be in our in our Gorilla U kind of like interface. I'll look into it for you. I'll find it. Mm-hmm. I'll find it for you. I was like, that was one of the first ones that I followed along with back in the day and i just i loved every minute oh, of that because it taught me so much when when he made it i was like nick what are you doing man what is this this looks pretty good i gotta say like because i was yeah. kind of like always kind of hating on cinema back in the day and when he put <laughs> that out i was like okay this is interesting and it kind of perked my ears up and kind of planted that seed for me so that that, mm-hmm. that is a cool tutorial for sure but Gosh, I mean, even the lighting stuff that it taught me about, like how to make those cherries have a nice little like strip of light, mm-hmm. you know, on the kind of on the mm-hmm. side of them and whatever, and yeah. place the light all nice and and all of that, man. It was just, you know. And then I finished it up and I stuck it right into my demo reel, like <laughs> <looking>. right, <laughs> like <laughs> you do. <laughs> nice, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah. yeah, and then the other thing about uh, plugins is that we are doing away with uh, perpetual purchasing of plugins mm-hmm. and going uh, putting all of our chips into the subscription basket and mm-hmm. sort mm-hmm. of like uh simplifying our offering for people and just you know trying to make plus as good as we possibly can like i i'm not even like talking as like a, a gsg like employee but like the value that you get and what I see coming this year and what's already dropped even, I'm like, this is kind of like too much stuff for people for this price. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, I don't, that's Nick's call. But um, yeah, I, I think it's an incredible value and it's only going to get, it's only going to get better. <laughs> we will just start calling you crazy Ashley. <laughs> no, I mean like it is pretty How insane. How can I to put all this deals? stuff in the subscription? How can we stay in business? <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah. Nick, don't do this. <laughs> crazy Nick. But yeah. No, crazy it, Nick. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's crazy, man. Like I, we, we're also seeing quite a bit of people starting to understand what we've been trying to build for the last year. And, and it's just now starting to, I think, click. And so we're seeing a lot of new people join the platform and we're really excited about the numbers that we're seeing. So we're really happy to all you new members out there. Thank you very I much. Need, and I need it, to download those surface good. imperfections and the uh, the uh, the metals, the new metal stuff. You know, I hate mm-hmm. having to create anisotropic stuff in Octane. Yeah, never, yeah. I, I can never get it right. Yeah, the tech product yeah. material uh, collection that we put out before we did the car paints is really mm-hmm. really useful. In fact, um, it's it kind of, it didn't work. We didn't really plan it this way, but they work really well with the car paints because you can use a lot of the tech product materials for the interior of your car, cool. and so it kind of works out. Um, there's uh, the awesome dude Nick V who does the car rendering uh, training. Uh, in this new drop, he also kicked out some really killer car renders and he's been sharing them, uh, on his social and we've been putting a few of them out as well. And he's been like, dude, I'm using these for this interior. And he like showed me this octane render of like, uh, uh, you know, a, a dashboard and it looks totally real. And it's like, mm-hmm. he's like, this is your leather. This is your plastic. This is the, the, I'm like, oh my God, that's rad, dude. I love seeing that stuff. 
Yeah, we we've used your textures and materials on. Yeah, it's it's just so easy to just like things. It's, jump yeah. into the uh, the octane. Uh, what you call it? The oh, the database. Yeah, octane the, uh, database. Yeah, oh, the, the DB. Octane, yeah. yeah. Wait, and you guys aren't like, on Plus yet? I, we are on Plus. I just, you know, we haven't downloaded any of the new stuff yet. You I'm gotta, sorry. You That's go. what I'm saying. I you need to do it right that. now. I'm literally, there, I, I literally had to reset my password so that I could get <laughs> oh, into it so that okay. I could then download it. Yeah. I got you. I got you, man. <laughs> but yeah. as you had it set up before, like like the original packs that, that you had, like I've been using those. It's like always the first place that I go. That's great, in my, man. In my Octane database and just bam, 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 just go through the library yeah it's just such a great base even if you don't use it all right like sometimes yeah. it's like man i really like how this the scratches on this look or something and i'll import it and i'll just use one material Part. one you know mm-hmm. or a normal map or something absolutely you know? yeah, yeah i think the if you haven't messed around with our library um in plus like that's really what i think is the the thing that i was hoping it would do which is like Something that you keep docked that you just have at your at, at arm's length that you can grab anything, grab a surface imperfection map, grab an HDRI, yeah. grab a material, and it's all right there. And we're continuously improving that. We just brought Search 1.0 to it um, in this last drop, so you can actually search. And obviously, we have big plans for Search to make that a lot nice. more uh, robust, mm-hmm. but... Um, yeah, I mean that, that really is how I want them to be used. Like we want them to be like, Oh, I love this one, but I just need to use its roughness or I just need to tweak its color or whatever it is. Like, absolutely. Like we're putting a lot of time and energy into assets for plus and Sean is a big part of that. And, um, we have a lot of really cool stuff coming out even in the rest of this year is already planned. And I can't really talk about it. There's people listening that will get very angry with me um, <laughs> yeah. if I say anything. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the it's exciting, man. Like I'm I'm super stoked for for what we want to do with it, and uh, not just like the materials too, but like the surface imperfections, the new area mm-hmm. light maps, and all that stuff is just like we're just always coming up with ideas <laughs> of what we can put into the platform and. Now we have this delivery system that we can do that with like very little effort. We can like come up with an idea, put it into development, and then it just shows up in your hub. Like that's cool. Like that's kind of what we want to yeah. build. And somebody okay. asked a question for those, too. for those, mm-hmm. not not me personally, but for those who haven't used the hub, could you just explain a little <laughs> bit about the hub for them? Yeah. So you might remember back when, um, you know, you might have a Grayscale Gorilla plugin and you have to like know where it goes and then you got to mm-hmm. copy and paste it or maybe you have an mm-hmm. installer and all that jazz. Well, we simplified that entire experience down to what we call the hub, which is a, a little utility that runs inside of Cinema and mm-hmm. will show you what's available to download, what's available to use, and you just simply click install. And it does it all behind the scenes, awesome. installs it where it needs to go, you're logged in, everything is cool, and then you just restart Cinema and whatever you had installed or downloaded shows up. Similar to the way Univer- uh, Cineversity works, right? The very, plugins? very, very similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, very yeah. similar. Unit. See, I'm just lazy. That's that's yeah, the only man. reason. You know what? I it's just downloaded it. I'm telling you, the second we get done, I'm installing it. I'm Dude, installing like, it. I'm it, very excited. It's, I've, I've become so spoiled by it now that like mm-hmm. when I have to do something um, manually or you know, double click an <laughs> installer or something. You're I'm, making, uh, I'm like, what is like this? It's like a baby's this toy. barbaric. <laughs> you know, like it's like that's, a baby's that's, toy. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Is your hands? I, I'm, yeah. I'm like one of the, uh, like you, I, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I get so set and okay, everything's working right now. I don't want to change anything. And it's like, oh, you mean I have to figure out how to install this? And I'm like, it's probably so easy. Yeah. And yeah. it probably takes two seconds. But I I'm know. The like, other day he was complaining about having to update all of the render nodes for Octane. Yeah. Oh, and I was yeah. like, literally in the time you were complaining, I just parsecked into all my computers and redid it. Yep. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's just that I have to take the time to do it, make sure they're the same. And part of the process for me, too, is like, okay, I have to make sure that it runs now in startup and all of that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it's probably easy. Yeah. I'm just I'm just lazy. Well, yeah. you know, then this is the platform for you, man. Like seriously, <laughs> like, literally, right. like I sold. And our developer is so talented that like uh, he'll do an update and 
he'll be like, yeah, you know, it's, it's in the hub now. Just go grab it. And I'll be like, oh, damn, you already put that out? That's crazy. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's definitely cool. And, and the library is basically just, um, well, it's not just, it's actually uh, an awesome plugin in itself that serves up all of our assets in one interface. Mm-hmm. And it works with HDRI Link. So if you pop over to the HDRI tab, you can just start clicking through HDRIs pop over to the Surface Imperfection tab, drag in a Surface Imperfection, and obviously go to all the materials and grab whatever you want. <clears throat> but yeah, and now I think um, we're going to start uh, putting in some scripts that I've written uh, that will be available cool. to Plus members as well. So those will be e- just, you know, they'll show up in the hub. For instance, these camera lens scripts that everybody's been wanting me to put out. Um, mm. I'm, we're putting those out very soon. And they'll just show up in the hub, and you'll just click install and, like, restart cinema. And you got them. That like, sounds fun. You got them mm-hmm. right there. Are those now the the scripts? How would that how would that work? Like, if it's a camera lens, what is it? What is it actually? It's an doing? OSL. No, no. The sorry, they're not. Um, they're. I should explain what that does. So I made Please these do. like py- Python scripts. <clears throat> that uh, emulate uh, a set of prime lenses. So if you know about cinematography, cinematographer uses uh, a set of fixed focal length prime lenses to shoot their Mm -hmm. films or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So like a 15, uh, maybe a 35, a 55, whatever. And so I basically set up a script that um, emulates those, sets you to the right focal length. And that seems kind of like easy. Like, why would I need a script to do that? Well, because if you're using anything other than a uh, horizontal aspect ratio, like a, a, a landscape aspect ratio, let's say you're doing like a square or like an Instagram story aspect ratio, the field of view is wrong. The way that cinema, oh, the way that cinema, I see what you're saying. the way that cinema calculates it, you can't just say put a 35 millimeter on a portrait aspect ratio render and have it look like a real 35 because it's not i never thought about that yeah gotcha. it's it, it, yeah. It, you will if you've ever done like set up a shot with like a 50 mil and in, in a 69 aspect ratio and then the client says yeah can you do a square crop of just that one thing and then you just you know change the aspect ratio and the lensing looks wrong and you're like yeah, wait right. why does this look wrong it's because the field of view isn't correct so the script right. actually does the math for you doesn't matter what aspect ratio you're at it'll set the mm-hmm. correct focal uh focal length then uh or not focal length but uh field I view. I had to do something like that similar it was for a commercial that we were doing and they're like okay now let's render it this way and i was like oh well i need extra parts from this render you know so i i i I actually, what I ended up doing is I just offset the field of view, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, by like fifty percent, and then then did that like four times, and I had like four times the the view. Which that works until you try and export your camera and use it in comp. Yeah, right. and then, <laughs> yeah, then you're, it then doesn't import those yeah. settings. Well, the, this yeah, script yeah. doesn't actually do anything with the uh, uh, that bound, the you know, the offset. offsetting right. or anything like that. It just simply like I want a fifty millimeter lens to look like a fifty millimeter, no matter what aspect ratio I'm using, and it was like driving that. me crazy. That's for awesome. years, so I just like quickly made it in Python, and um, then I showed it in a stream, or I showed it somewhere, and people were like, "I need those scripts," yeah. and we're like, "Okay, cool, let's do <laughs> scripts in here now and see how that works." So that's cool. Yeah, yeah, that's cool that you can like that. It, so as you're creating this stuff, are you able to upload it like just immediately? Like you're like, "Oh, I, I need a new metal," so I create a metal. I'm gonna throw it in here, and now it's added into the. The new metals or something. Uh, it can't be that. I wouldn't give myself that much power. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, because, like, literally, like, I don't... Another thing that we take really seriously is, like, stability, and we don't yeah. want things to be wrong. We don't want things to break and all that sort of thing. For, so we test sure. everything yeah. that we put out. We, like, rigorously test it. Cool. Uh, and so we we probably wouldn't do that. It would be more like, like, I'm working on a um, a smaller little material collection that won't be a part of like a big drop, but might be like a, like a little thing that will add sometime Mm -hmm. soon. And even that has to be like given to the developer and tested by the team. And then it's checked as okay. It's good to go. Uh, And the beta, we have a beta team too, and the beta team will get it. So if you're on a, on a beta, on the beta team, you get a different hub than our regular Mm, users and they get advanced access to stuff so that they can test it. So Mm. it's, it's a, it's a legit like operation. It's like, 
it's we've come a long way in 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 the time that I've started there. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the questions in the the chat was about being able to do multiple seats. Uh, where did it go? I don't know where it went. Uh, uh, Jeff any, said, any, any chance, chance of having... having two nodes with a single license of plus will happen? Yeah, it's going to happen. I don't know when. Um, it's actually trickier than we anticipated. So we are working on that right now, trying to figure out that stuff. Um, and yeah, we're, we're, we wish we, we could deliver that right now, but we're still kind of working out the kinks on the back end and making sure everything works properly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's coming. I wish it was coming like today, but be patient. We, <laughs> it'll get there. Cool. And I see Bob Walmsley is in here. You can't What's give up, away Bob? any secrets. <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for that, that GPU dough. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe they'll have some some stuff soon. Now, when you're managing these teams, though, uh, one of the things that you've been using uh, is Notion, mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> we've been using Notion a y'all, lot. Y'all, y'all do that. I'm going to run to the restroom real quick. I wish you would. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. amazing. Now we get to nerd out. Hell yeah, dude! Bit. Nerds unite. Matt doesn't. Matt doesn't like the organizational nerd stuff because he doesn't like to organize. But he's going to go off um, and have <laughs> some ice cream, some vanilla ice cream. Right. Uh, that's, that's, uh, it's something that I know that you've been into for a while and I had been seeing your posts about it and I was, you know, I did have my own system and whatnot that I had used. I started back in the day with, you know, Omni focus and I was doing the getting things done method and then I simplified it. I went to Todoist. I was doing okay doing Todoist, but one of the big things for Todoist is that it's very much date based it's not project epic based or Mm -hmm. or any of that right so you're working on something and then you realize these four things didn't get done then then you got to like go in every day and change the dates on the things that you get didn't get done or that you need to move around it's everything is based on what day it is right and and uh not only that but obviously it's not as as powerful so um, you've been into it for a while i've been into it for a month or so and i will say even in that little month uh, I spent maybe a weekend trying to figure out what it is, <laughs> how to use it, because you get it and you're like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah. But once you dig into it, the 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 hole opens. You go down the rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. You realize how powerful it is, and it has honestly, in the month that we have started using it, our business at the same time. In, in for our different businesses that we have has exploded in many many aspects as far as the amount of projects we have the complexity of the projects we have the people that we're working with mm-hmm. adding contractors adding people to work it all that has happened and i do feel like it has been completely instrumental in the last month in keeping us on track hell yeah for the ridiculous amount of work that we have going on which we're very fortunate to have um so I guess the number one question would be, how did you get into Notion? And the number two question is, what do you use it for? Okay, so um, I'm kind of a project management geek. I nerd out on productivity, all the things that you just mentioned. I'm into that stuff. So when I started at Grayscale Gorilla, there really wasn't a whole lot of uh, software-based systems for managing lots and lots of different stuff. And so we tried um, we tried Monday.com for a while, right? And that was like a project management system, online based, uh, cloud based, and it was okay. It it did some things pretty well, and other things it didn't. But then I started realizing that not only did we need something that could manage projects and manage people and all that sort of thing, but we also needed a wiki because we had so much information about our business that was spread out across Google Docs and emails and this and that and like notes and stuff like that, that we needed a wiki that could be like our second brain that we could remember things about how we we run. And then I was like, well, then that's when I started like researching and seeing if there was a solution to two separate problems. Like, could we, what if Monday.com isn't doing it for us for managing projects and we don't, and Google Docs isn't working for like wiki type stuff. Is there some replacement? And that's when I discovered Notion and realized that like, oh, okay, so here's a program that is kind of like Google Docs and kind of like Monday.com and kind of like Todoist and also kind of like a wiki, 
but it's all in one thing. And I was like, this is confusing, mm-hmm. number one. When I went down that same weekend that you did, yeah. where I was like, I don't know what this is yet. And once I kind of like got my feet wet with it, and I made a page, and I think I made like a, a table, and I made like a shopping list. Yeah. I made something as simple as like a shopping list. And then I looked at it, and I was like, oh, this is everything. This is just like, yeah. this is whatever we want it to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then I like took a step back and I built our notion, Grayscale Gorilla. Thank God, like I work at a place that is like super cool and open to like me completely changing their systems. Yeah. <laughs> and like, uh, I was like, guys, we're going to try this. And I don't know yet if it's going to be great or if it's going to suck, but we're going to try it. And we built our entire... Uh, company system onto Notion, project management, task management, everything in the para workflow, which I can talk about more about if you want. But uh, I, you know, I, I think you know they might fall. People might fall asleep. But um, the uh, the 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 basic <laughs> basis of it is like we built that first version of it, and it worked so well that I built a new version of it that's even more kind of streamlined. And now I would say that we couldn't really operate at the at the um, the amount we couldn't operate with the amount of flexibility and uh, as fast we couldn't move as fast as we do now without it. Like we literally use it mm-hmm. yeah. every single day. Our project managers, executive producer, myself, everybody is on it all the time. We do all of our updates, all of our reviews, all of our approvals. Everything is on Notion. Yeah. There, there's a system that I built when Matt and I first met and we were working back at this production mm-hmm. company where we were very much a cookie cutter type place. Yeah. You know, we're, we're, pu- we're pushing out local commercials on a national scale every day. And there's always the same kind of workflow with it. Mm-hmm. And, and so I meticulously built this system that was very much like Notion. Mm-hmm. But it, they, the, before this happened, the place was using folders, like physical mm-hmm purple folders with sheets of information in them. And that was the project management. And Mm -hmm. so I built a system and I called it purple folder. And it was, it was, it was a, a Drupal site that had the same type of things. You know, you could do a a drop down and say status, and then you could Mm -hmm. type a note and you could assign a person to a project and all of that, but it all had to be built by hand. So this is like purple folder on crack yeah. with my favorite thing with Notion, which is the ability to just change something on the fly. You got a database, you know, we need a column for such and such. Well, hit the plus button and add that column. Yep. You know, it's not like you have to start over. You don't have to change anything. You just hit a button. Yeah. It's, and it, it's been great. I went as far as like I, I built our Notion, the Grayscale Gorilla Notion, which is massive and... um but it's it's contained under a set of rules which works really well. Then I went and on a weekend I built a studio in a box notion that I was like I think I mentioned it to you Dave. Uh I built a completely separate notion with the idea that I could um onboard a studio and maybe they buy it from me or something, I don't know. And yeah. it, it I never really went anywhere with it, but I have this like I have to give you a tour of it sometime because I think you'd really dig it. Yeah, yeah, too. we we need to collab on it that. It has yeah. every <laughs> like get a little I went nerd like nerd out sesh. I went super far, dude. Like there's an invoice database, a, a CRM database that ties into your client uh database. It's all connected. All the data is connected. So mm-hmm. it, if you enter a new client and you can track how much money that you've made with that client since oh, you know day one Ooh. um yeah i went a little nuts with it and uh it's like some people sit around at the tv you know watching tv knitting or like <laughs> re- or whatever you know and i'm sitting there like my knitting is notion i'm like you know organizing these crazy systems that's funny i um, i'm i'm with jeff burns in the chat it's uh, like i i'm so awful with project management like i just don't like my self-diagnosed ADD brain can't handle that much information, that much boring information all at once. You know what I'm Which saying? Which is understandable, but when you get to a certain point, you you have to use it or else there's no way to maintain that's, a large project. I think that's fine. Like you don't have to like I, I think I think that you don't have to 
care enough or, or know enough to set it up. You just have to make yourself use it. So whatever yeah. system you yeah. you make or you you build or um, you find it, just use it. Like somebody once it's told me, the is best good. productivity is the system is the I one. I do think that you it use. also has a very steep learning curve. Like, it, well, it, it does. Dave but has taken integrate. some time to explain it to me, and then even today, I was like, "Where is this?" And he's like, "It's over there." And I'm like, "Where is that? Can you point? Can you just tell no, me I, what it is?" That is. He's like, "No, just yeah. look there." That's its biggest. You know? yeah. That's the biggest hurdle uh, by far. Like you nailed it. Like we we have. There's people like Grayscale Gorilla who you know feel the same about it, and I think it is like you're never going to find the perfect project management system the perfect mm-hmm. project management system is the one that you that you use like that's yeah, it right because exactly. it, it, it's not necessarily ever going to be perfect but i think the your the solution for you would be to like all right have dave set it up dave sets me tells me what i need to do and i do it and if you don't stick to it though then you that's then the that's thing. the problem like if, then nothing will help you <laughs> Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Because because everybody can have like their their super awesome like personal way of doing that. But once you're trying to collaborate with another person, neither of those people is going to have is going to be able to agree on it. Not even two mm-hmm. people. So so you have to do you have to look at it and say, "Okay, what is almost working for both of us?" right? So you know, an example is I can build this system out because I understand it. Matt, you don't have to know how to build it. Right. You know, if anybody is looking to build it, I would say the number one thing you need to do, first of all, is sit in front of it and try and build something that makes sense to you. Build, don't just mess with it. Come up with a plan. But then when you do that, if you're working with other people, get their input. But then if you understand it, like, enough, like for Matt, I could help you. I We could sit down and do, like, what I did. I have a Dave's task list that is a private thing on my notion and it goes through and it finds only the things that a i can work on what's actionable b stuff that is only due within the next week let's say mm-hmm. and then c only gives me the p- the bits of information that i need to see right then you know yep. and that's like with that add thing matt where you could say okay i need a dashboard that tells me what i need to do right now and that's it right and just i mean i that. had to onboard uh a lot of people onto our notion who never, who are not like super tech and like not super into notion or whatever. And so I had to design a system that would be simple enough for somebody to, to just jump in when they need to. And then robust mm-hmm. enough for a PM who needed to dig in and like go crazy with it. And I give everybody a dashboard. When you start at GSG, I make a notion dashboard that only has stuff that's pertinent to you on it. You, yeah. do, you don't need to go anywhere else if you don't want to except for that dashboard and any tasks that it get assigned to you or deliverables that they get assigned to you will pop up on your dashboard with information. So all you need to do yeah. is monitor that and like you're good. And um, that, that just comes down to having somebody in the organization that is into it and can build that system to where, cause you're right. Like you shouldn't have to build a technical system that only works for Dave. Like you got to have it work for right. the people that, that like Matt who don't, necessarily right. want to dive in and you build the system for them and then you kind of work backwards and that's what i did in fact i recently tweaked it because one of the issues that we have as a company is getting things approved on time because we have so many things that need my eyeballs or nick's eyeballs that it's it's hard right. to get those approved so i built a uh, a review dashboard that just populates stuff that is up for review so he or i could just go into that mm-hmm. one dashboard and just chunk through the list of things that need our eyeballs mm-hmm. but it's really nice to have the different options and the different views as well because people do work differently so you might have that master table view but maybe somebody that's too much that's that's o- information oh, overload there's yeah. a billion things so then you switch over to gallery view and okay, this only shows a picture of everything. So I can, like, for example, we have every episode of that that is coming up for this show and of the drop mm-hmm. and who it is and everyone is separated and what date it's going to be on and what all Any the social notes, media information that, that is. That has been excellent. Like, that yeah. is very well organized because it's just like, episode 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 and anytime someone hits me up or randomly asks me on twitter for a foundation invite but then says here look at my rareable stuff i, I i'm able to quickly throw it into and you, you know, do that it as episode a comment. of the drop yeah 
It's a comment. It comes up. If you tag me in it, then I get it to my phone. And I'm like, oh, Matt needs me to do a thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and I'll put that on my list or whatever I need to do. Um, with, and, and you could do that gallery view, and it's beautiful. And you go back and, and organize it so where you can say – like I have it set up to say, show me every episode from uh, yesterday until mm-hmm. the, the end of time. Mm-hmm. Because then – because then, like, when I'm working on posting the show, it'll show me, you know, everything that's in the system for the show that we're currently working on and moving forward. I could go into the archive, and that is just a copy of the exact same thing, except it doesn't have a filter for, you know, right. tomorrow. It shows mm-hmm. everything. I can go to a timeline view. I can go to a view. I, I love the view that you can do with things if you have a lot of people on a team where you can say, let's go to a kind of the car. What's the board? Is it a board view? And you can go to a board view board. that shows, yeah, it's like, these are the tasks for Dave. These are the tasks for Matt. These are the tasks for wh- mm-hmm. whatever. And it goes down the list. And in that way, people who think differently and and work differently at least have some options. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. I think that's the biggest hurdle with Notion is that there's too many options. And <laughs> it, and yeah. it, it really... But that's yeah. also the good thing about right, it, right? I know. That's, that's the, what makes it hard. And honestly, like, it's for... Like, I like it because it's so malleable and i'm a designer a graphic designer so like for me i can make it look how i want it to look and like i understand that not everybody else thinks like that or is like that and they just want they don't want to have to mess with it and i get that too um Mm -hmm. but yeah for those out there that aren't really familiar with notion at all fundamentally notion is just pages it's not that on that's not that different than google docs google docs are Mm -hmm. just pages the difference between yeah. Google Docs and Notion is every page can be organized in a lot of different ways. It could be an entry in a table. It could be an entry in uh, what they're calling a database, which is a database is just a grouping of pages. That's all it is. And if you start to think it's like of, a spreadsheet, it is. But I think the word spreadsheet intimidates a lot of people and, and it intimidates yeah. me. I don't <laughs> like spreadsheets. Like to me, like I like to think of Equal it more like, yeah, like, colon. I mean, you can yeah, do yeah. that stuff for sure. <laughs> But really, yeah. every entry on a on a database is a page at the at the root of it. Um, and then when you start to like, I, I recommend if you're even like thinking about it or you're curious about it, find Notion and make yourself a shopping list and just like look at it and then mm-hmm. you know do some research. They have a great YouTube channel. You should check it out. I'm not getting paid but, but by d- them, d- by the way. But dig into it, even though make I should it a, make it a uh, like a detailed right. Put like. Here is my here is the store that I want to buy it in. Here's the, oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, what is he doing with his microphone? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm such an idiot. Placement. I was like moving it this way and like <laughs> I'm I'm not being paid by them, but I do love their product. But do do a, a a shopping list, but don't just do like the food. Do like what type of food it is, right? What section uh-huh. it is? What store it's at? Yeah. You know, just go into the details. Not that you're actually going to need that for a shopping list. But it ha- you know, it's the exercise super anal, of doing but, it. Right. It helps you. Like Jeremy says in the chat, he's like, I plan on trying to use it to organize my TV station delivery list. So set it up. You're going to put their call sign. You're going to put their DMA. You're going to put, like, the the format that they usually like. And, and you could do that by making your own drop downs or multiple multiple selections like get get super nerdy with it put the contact information put a link thing in there so that you can always click a link to go maybe to a document that you have that has their specs like that right there you spend i don't know four hours just take just say i'm going to take four hours and that's a lot of time Mm -hmm. yeah four hours and make something like that and then once that little thing clicks then it's then then you're then you're then you're hooked hooked, dude you won't go out you won't come out for air for a while the rabbit hole, the reddits that you can go find, the stuff people have made as examples. It's like anything that you feel like, oh, I, can I do this thing? Somebody's probably probably done it already. Yeah, you can always hit me up so. too because I'm I'm a huge nerd on it, and I uh, I would consider myself to be an expert user at this point. So if you have any questions, you can always hit me up in uh, various slacks. Yeah, it's definitely helpful. It's helpful when doing a. Uh, really when working in in the way that we work nowadays where we're not around people we can't just go to someone's Mm -hmm. office and say hey like and and people are working weird hours right so if you want to put a comment on something at 11 o'clock at night 
if someone's around, they're going to answer, then they'll answer. If right. not, mm-hmm. you'll get it the next morning. And that's, that's great. And working with contractors around the world too, because we're working with people who are on crazy different time zones. Yep. Mm-hmm. So it's really, really hard to manage and throw more con- contractors at a, at a project at any given time. You know, there's the mythical man month and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it definitely helps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it I mean, it's helps. it's it's the stuff that's, you know, Matt, you know, it's not fun to look at and it's not like, you know, it's not super sexy to think about, yeah. but it's also like really important if you want to scale your business and you want to be able to, uh, you know, not want to kill yourself or your or your partners <laughs> or studio coworkers, you know, like building a system that works is like. Is it's just being able to sleep well at night, knowing that everything's not going to break. Mm-hmm. And it's also about sleeping well at night because you went through your list. You know what needs to get done. You know the status of everything get, that needs to get done. And there's no weird thing saying, did I do everything I needed to do today? I don't know. I'm having trouble sleeping. My brain can't think because lit- I'm telling myself to to relax, yeah. but I'm not relaxing yeah. because my brain is cycling saying, you got to do that thing, you got to do that thing. But if it's marked down as... This is good. This is good. This is good. You don't have to work on anything tomorrow until 8 a.m. Yeah. Then you can rest. Then you can get sleep at night. Mm-hmm. I actually, I, I still use Todoist in conjunction with Notion. Um, I, do too. I use it just basically to kind of like jot down what I want to get done that day or that week or whatever. Right. Dude, it, right on the same page with you, man. Yeah. That's still the outboard brain. But I, I, I went a little step further with it and I. I basically organize my time uh, based on how long it's going to take me to do something. So I have yeah. a filter in Todoist that is 30 minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, or what I call deep work that is like an ongoing deep project. And mm-hmm. everything that goes in that list gets categorized according to one of those four different time uh, periods. So that throughout the day, if I'm finding myself with an hour at the end of the day, I just dive into this list and say, what do I have that I could get done right now in this hour? Or if I only have 15 yeah. minutes left in the day, or I find myself with 15 minutes before I need to go you know, do something, I'll jump into this list. But by organizing things into chunks of time like that, <laughs> it really helps me kind of Tetris out my days that get pretty crazy. Right. Because there are those times where you just need you need to hanker down and get into a project for you know four to six hours yeah. and without interruption and yeah. that's not going to happen on the way out the door to go to a meeting. No, that's the deep work. And, you know, like I try to yeah. I try to like carve out. It's not easy right now, but I try to carve out as much time as I can for deep work. But sometimes it's only two or three days a week that I can afford to do it. Yeah, and I I do a similar thing when it comes to project. Uh, not project status, that status is a different thing, but the priority, I'll put in a priority mm. and I'll, 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 I keep it simple at the beginning. It's like, okay, this needs to happen in the next quarter or the next month or the next week. Mm-hmm. And also I put Fortnite in there because there's a lot of things. It's like, well, this week or next, wow. I'll put Fortnite in there. But then also uh, I put two at the top and one of them is soon and it's in yellow, meaning this is happening pretty soon. You probably need to get on this. And then lastly, I put in now with a big exclamation, like if you do anything today, you need to do these three things in red that say now, like this has to happen no matter what today, right away now. <laughs> and it's, it's kind of a weird system, but it's been working for me pretty well to each their own. I get that. But, um, <laughs> somebody just because, commented, I just, you know, sorry, I was just laughing at some, what somebody that? said. Said Chad probably walks around with a MacBook Air and a can of LaCroix these days. <laughs> <laughs> that's like a, that's like a producer that's, thing. Ah, oh, that's yeah. amazing. Well, the head is shaved. I don't know. We're in the beanies, I, could, I can't so read who said I'm that, right though. Did they say Mr. Keyframes? I don't know yeah. who Mr. Keyframes is. Reveal Mr. yourself, Keyframe. Mr. Keyframes. <laughs> Mr. Keyframes, because that's a that's a I, good joke. I uh, I uh, I, got some I have a little right here in the fridge. sticky, you know, like uh, one of the stickies. That's where I list out my projects. That's that's it. It's easy yeah. for me. You Dude, know, we've got if it one works. project going right now where it's, you know, they have given us their like Excel breakdown and stuff like that. Like when things are due, and it's so much easier just to look at that versus then referencing ours and making sure they're all the same 
I, I well, I'm making there's gonna, sure they're there's the going to be a point though that you're going to have to adapt to whatever yeah. system Dave builds. I know. And like that is, <laughs> I went through the same thing with Nick. Like Nick is not really super into like these types of systems. And so I just had to sort of design them to be as as like frictionless as possible really. And then yeah. uh, we, just let me worry about blank. Yeah, well, yeah. I like, I'm I'm designing the the notion, but then we have amazing project managers and executive producers and you know really amazing people that keep him on track and keep everybody on track. But yeah, I think the, the hard part is like, um, you're going to have to just like let go of your post-its and like give in to the system. Hi, my name is Sashia Dumont. I'm a writer, actor, and filmmaker. Hi, my name is Paul Robinson. I'm a director, DP, and filmmaker. We are the creators and hosts of the Go Gorilla Filmcast, an online source for all things indie film. We are a husband and wife film team and co-owners of Send3 Productions, and we started this podcast for filmmakers like ourselves who were producing on micro-budgets with Skeleton Crews. Go Gorilla is a weekly podcast that features various talents in TV, film, and web series productions. We've interviewed filmmaker powerhouses like Kestrin Pantera, Richard Raymond, Alex Ferrari, Cassandra Ebner, and Ryan Connolly. Amazing actors like Hannah Ward, Lou Taylor Pucci, Chris Wataski, and Eileen Gruba. Groundbreaking cinematographers like Jody Lee Lipes, and Jessica Lee Gagne, and many more. We also offer weekly reviews of our favorite films and shows, which vary from low budget first time filmmakers to A-listers, and everyone in between. Go Gorilla is proud to announce that we have officially joined the MoGraph Podcast Network. So if you love filmmaking as much as we do, tune in every Sunday for a new episode of the Go Gorilla Filmcast. Your, your source, source for, for all things indie film. film. Now available on the MoGraph Podcast Network. Yeah. But you can still use your post-its for your own things, just like I use Todoist for my own things. Right, yeah, right. I mean, just I don't use it to I, manage a project. <laughs> I moved a yeah. lot of my stuff over to Notion just for like in just a private to do list, you know. Yeah. It's the same it's the same thing as my stickies, it's just in But the, what's great is now you can make your own dashboard and you can put the stickies on it, yeah. you can put the projects on it. I, I can see MoGraph stuff, personal stuff, mm-hmm. Nexus stuff. I can see a list of okay, what what do yeah, I have but, to do? Yeah, uh, but the thing is like I don't have 4 hours to dedicate to Notion right now, you know. Like, yeah. we're so jam-packed with work. Literally, we've got freelancers working 16-hour days right now, you know? Yeah. Damn, you guys so are... I, uh, making overtime. Okay, I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, of course, we're paying overtime. You guys are killing, yeah, yeah. killing people out yeah. there. It's voluntary. Yeah. It's yeah, it voluntary. It is voluntary. They won't, yeah. yeah, yeah. I keep saying, I'll, I'll get you more people, but he's cool with handling but the work. that's the mythical man month. It doesn't yeah. always help to... Throw people out of project. Right, exactly. It's like the amount of time that we would spend onboarding another person, that other could person just could just get the, the work. job, the work done, you know? Yeah. yeah. So. I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I get that. And, and it's kind of a, it's a catch-22. Like, you could probably be more effective if you had a good system, but you can't find the time to make the system because you're right. too busy. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But, yeah, you got to make the time and you got to, like, put in the put in the... Maybe the, now is not the, the exact time to set it up, no. but like doing it will but save maybe you. in like a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I did uh, initially. Is like whatever weekend I built all that stuff on, I didn't really have the time to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I just kind of said, you know what, this just has to happen. It just has to. I mean, yeah. that's kind of so. that's kind of like what needs to to. You gotta you're gonna have to lean on whoever finds it interesting enough to like put in the effort. <laughs> Right, you know what right, I mean, and right. and that's I'm fine with that. Yeah, and I'll build it. Honestly, like that's great. Like if you don't have a a lot of opinions about it and just want it to just, I just want to do my work. Like I don't want to think about mm-hmm. this. I just want to do my work. And yeah. and then I'd say the two of you have a perfect relationship because if you both had different ideas of how it was going to go, then you're going to be like at you know butting heads. But if you trust, uh, if you if you trust them enough to go off and build it, as long as you promise to use it give them input then I yeah think that's good. kind of the thing like you yeah, matt I, can just step back and let me be the nerd yeah and, and i mean yeah, that's the problem though it. like i can't guarantee that i'm gonna re- even remember to use it at least right now you know because like that, that wouldn't right. that wouldn't even be I really good haven't. i have been uh, like the drop that's easy it's like okay i know where that is but yeah. it's like some of our projects and like keeping track of all that stuff okay i see it but 
I don't I don't know where where's it assigned where is it, is it, is it uh, yeah, so I would what, you know? I would not let that fly like I would be <laughs> I would not let that fly like I would yeah. be honest I, w- I would be on like a zoom with you and being like all right wh- where where's the hang up here dude like tell me how we can yeah. make this work better. and I would be like all right then which of these projects are you going to handle so that I can learn Notion for the next four hours? <laughs> well, and I'll be like, well, let's go Cause, to... Because as of right now, view. I'm not sleeping for the next 24 hours. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> let's go to the board there's... view that see where it falls in. Yeah, yeah it sounds to me it. like you just need to like uh, almost kind of tailor it to be a bit more visual and less impact. Like... I wouldn't ask if you're in the middle of a big production. Like I would never ask somebody to be like, "Oh, you know, take six hours right. and go watch some tutorials yeah. on Notion." Yeah, see, that's the thing yeah, right yeah. now. I would love to get into this. Yeah, you know, no, I would just, just show you enough. To there get, are not enough hours in the day right yeah, now. Yeah, just I would just yeah. show you enough to do what the job that needs to be done, and then just ask that you just do it. And like, you might not need. You don't need to understand what it's all doing. Just bookmark yeah. this page, favorite this page, and click this when you're done. Like that's all mm-hmm. we're saying. Yeah. Just put the status of the project. Really, yeah. that's all that matters right now. Where where is this in the status? Because I can take care of the rest. Right. Let lean on. Let let yeah. Dave do all that shit. <laughs> I'll worry about blank. You right. worry about blank. All right. <sighs> uh, I think I think we are. Oh, yeah, let me do we're like links because I have one link. All right, one what? link. Dave, 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 Dave. What, what you got? Nothing. Go ahead. Oh, okay. The one link that I do have is the abstract distortions in Octane and Cinema 4D. Yeah. By Aryev. It's done really Make well. Sure I'm really out. happy. Like, yeah, man. People are enjoying it. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I've, I've been really surprised by the amount of positive feedback we've gotten. I've seen it all over Instagram. People, you know, tagging him in it and him retweeting it or whatever whatever regramming is that what it's called <laughs> regramming yeah oh jeremy had a good point yeah notion is also really good on mobile is it it's nice on mobile yeah hmm. didn't okay. used to be but it's gotten better quite a bit yeah <clears throat> just get notifications and such so all right you ready to do the drop let's do the drop the drop 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 is this the fucking mic drop. this is exactly what i should be doing <laughs> What's up, and welcome to this week's episode of The Drop, your weekly source for all things NFT and crypto art, as well as upcoming drops by notable people in the MoGraph industry. Let's do it. All right, what do we got this week? Let's do it. Chad Ashley's here. Chad Bye-bye. Ashley's here. We're gonna, we, I, I feel like we're really going to get into the NFTs, you know, if you, if you, as long as you got time. I'm, <laughs> I might have to... I should have went to use the bathroom during that intro. Okay, go... Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. Well, you, you guys right, start you can off. You go use the restroom. Yeah, go for it. All right. You know, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. Uh, we'll just hop into some of the ones that are going on uh, uh, Nifty totally. and... Uh, uh, Maker's Place. Go ahead, do that. All you right. know, then we'll All jump right. into some... We'll jump into some topics with it. So... Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, so first where up, were you doing? So let's uh, let's start off with the the this week's drops on Nifty. Um, I would mention the one that's uh, happening r- literally right this second, but you know who cares? Um, Which one is that? I don't know. It's not on. I my mean, you could, there's always secondary market, right? Yeah, secondary. Okay, and that's an interesting. Remind me about secondary market. Let's not let's not leave without talking about the secondary market. Can you put a pin on that? Because uh, there's okay. there are things that I want to talk about with the secondary market in Nifty, but um. Uh, first thing that I've got is uh, uh, dropping today, later on tonight, uh, uh, March 29th. We've got six and five. Uh, there's these beautiful interior renderings, um, and there's a... Um I can't remember what they called it. The Revolt. That's what it is. So um, these are really, really pretty renderings. But then I, I guess there's a uh, a Revolt from all the different... I don't know... Like the furniture or something like that. It looks really neat. Uh, it's, the furniture and, revolts? A f- yeah, the furniture revolts, I guess. So, uh, I don't know. Really, really pretty interior renderings. I'm a big... I I, I, I did a lot of it. I've interior renderings back in my day, and yeah. I, re- I really have an appreciation of really pretty ones. And I think 6 and 5 does a really good job of that. So, if you're looking... If that interests you, if you like that type of art, you know, sure, pick one up. Um, next up also tonight, we've got, uh, 
uh, I'm going to butch- butcher all these names. Robert Hans, and n- I'm going to assume the name is Noise. I don't want to say Noise 7 and be one of the, the Dead Mouth <laughs> it's 5 like saying things. Dead Mouth 5. Right, exactly. Yeah. So there's these really cool <laughs> ethereal renders and stuff like that. I love the composition. I think they're super pretty. You know, uh, uh, that one. And then they've got a limited edition uh, physical token with the one of ones. So uh, really pretty stuff. I, I like it. Um, I thought that one was uh, of notable note note was notable notable noting yeah notable noting so yes um and a lot of these you'll if you're following nifty's uh twitter account or whatever you'll see i'm skipping over a lot of these some of them are musicians and some of them i i I feel like if a musician this is my own personal opinion if if a musician is going to do a collaboration with someone and they're going to do a drop i think the musician needs to really care about this stuff you know, I think I feel For like sure. a musician needs to be 100 percent in just like the artist is, you know, and like maybe tweet it out. You know, if a musician doesn't care enough to even tweet out, tweet out yeah. their nifty drop, yeah, yeah. I am not going to put it on my list because if they don't right. care enough about their nifty drop, why the fuck should I? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. Anyway um uh next up we got uh also tonight esteban diacono i think is how the name is pronounced um it's cool mography stuff uh similar to the uh stuff that i think john norlander did um a few weeks ago this one's called platonic love um using like these uh actual like platonics you know like uh like a d20 whatever i get you, it you know i yeah. see what you did there yeah, yeah yeah so you know you got the as you can see, you know, it's very, really pretty stuff. I, at least from what I can tell from this split screen of whatever the they've strips. got. Yeah, from this strip. very pretty strips. So um, that, uh, that is tonight. Uh, starting tomorrow, tomorrow we've got uh, Jason Ebier. Um, these are, okay, okay, so let me preface this by saying, I was gonna this say, this one I wasn't gonna be on, on my list originally. Like, I saw this and I'm like, I don't know about this, right? I'm watching but, this through before I bring it up on the screen. <laughs> is this dangerous to bring up on the screen? Uh, there may be some, and this, uh, there may be some nipples, yes. Yeah, there may be some Oh, nipples. there were some nipples. There were some nipples, that's, so. I think that's the only thing. So. Okay, so these are weird, like, super shiny, sexy looking people. Like, so Sham's tweeted this out uh you know mm-hmm. that she was really looking forward to this one and stuff and it's like i i don't know it doesn't appeal to me personally but i feel like this is very much the nft crowd a lot of the nft crowd would go for that so anyway i i, I wanted to I mean, put it that beats one. having to do a skin shader <laughs> right <laughs> it definitely beats having to do a skin shader right <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so there's that one today. Uh, the same day, uh, tomorrow, the 30th, um, March 30th, uh, Gold Weird. I don't, I, I don't know if that's how you Gold say it. Gold Weird. Weird. Gold so you Weird. may recognize okay. some of their stuff. They've sold previously on Nifty, and they've done really well. Remember the animals, the crystal animals that you see yeah. all over Nifty? They're constantly being sold. Uh, mm-hmm. They have a new drop tomorrow. So, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, they've sold, they've sold well in the past, but who knows as far as investments anymore in Nifty. Nifty's like, I mean, artists, I don't know. I feel, it, I'll, I'll get into that. I, I, Nifty, yeah, we'll get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, uh, next up, the 31st, we got Kid Mograph. Kid Mograph along with uh, Dream Catalog. Um, Dream Catalog, the, I'm assuming, is the musician um and uh kid mograph uh did uh seven unique animated pieces for each of these tracks off this new uh this new album um from uh from dream catalog uh really cool if you know uh kid mograph stuff you know it's super bad a you know i really i really like his stuff so that's coming Mm -hmm. up on the 31st um let's see okay so this next one that i'm mentioning uh, there's, I guess it's a, like a collab between three different like artists or whatever. But really, the the a lot of them are the same, like you know, oh shiny head Daz model ones. But then you've yeah. got this first one, which is Frenetic Void, which I was looking at their stuff and I dig their stuff like it's a very Dolly esque, you know, super pretty like. Could very much go along with uh, uh, the same, like, you know, Daz model, whatever, NFTs, but, like, super weird and 
I, abstract. I, I dig it. I super dig it. Yeah. So I don't know what they are offering as the three artists. Go away, cat. Um, but I'm <laughs> I'm really excited to see you know what is uh, uh, what what the the drop is going to be. So that's on the 31st. Uh, coming up on the 1st of April. Uh, Clarence Molata and Digital Renaissance. Oh, this is Digital Renaissance. So this is, this is, they're taking old famous pictures and messing with them in After Effects. And, uh, I, I, that's, that's something I'd like to talk about because I, I think this is a really good, uh, uh, topic of discussion on NFTs and stuff. Like, okay, I understand that is definitely like, you know, you're definitely changing up enough to where okay copyright wouldn't exist plus but it, it's Could like be parody yeah, yeah. It, through parody or whatever but it's like at what point is it just like and i'm not saying this with this one specifically because i i think this one has changed up enough but at what point are you taking someone else's work and then it just becomes lazy you know like for example uh uh Pac or Pack or whatever, you know, has done a few drops and I feel like they've been very lazy. Like where they take like there was one, it was the creation of man or whatever, and they just took out a bunch of like squares out of it. Like, you know, and then and sold it, it as it is. It's like okay. As opposed to really changing it up like the one we just right, saw. Right, exactly. You know? Yeah. And I I don't know. I, I it's it's interesting taking artist objective, whatever. You know, right, like right, right. to each their own. Some people may like super shiny Daz models, you know, with huge muscles and, you know, <laughs> really reflective boobs. But like, that's not my cup of tea. I really enjoy the architectural renderings and like the, 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 uh, the, whatchamacallit, the ethereal stuff and the, you know, whatever to each their own, you know, anyway. So I was, uh, I, I don't know. It was interesting what y'all thought about that. You know, taking already work that's already done and then just messing with it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it. I mean, you know, it really depends on how you do it. Yeah. If you're just taking, like, Jesus and putting Elon Musk's head on him. Right. It's like, eh, okay. Then I'm sold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it, it it's it's like uh, so I don't know. There was this skit that was done. I don't know. It was like Comedy Central or something. And this guy wanted to see about how close he could get to the original and still call it parody. You know, so he opened right. this little pop up coffee shop called Dumb Starbucks, and basically it sold all the same stuff Starbucks did. He just called it dumb Starbucks, you know, <laughs> and it's like, oh, OK, you know, I, 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 I guess. But it's like, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't if know. you change one pixel, is it right. still a copyright? Is it still thing? a copyright? What about two? What about 10 pixels? Yeah. At uh, what point? How many pixels do I have to change? You know, like, for example, if it was a 1920 by 1080 and I just rearranged every pixel, is that still their work? Because technically, all it's the pixels like the are still there. It's like the adage about if something is considered uh, nude, like nudity art, or is it porn? There right. is no defining right. description of what that is. You just know it when you see it. <laughs> I guess. <clears throat> uh, you know, and it's different for every person. Yeah. So, anyway, Chad, do you have any opinions on that? I mean, to each his own, right? Like, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna like criticize somebody's reason to or motivation or uh when it when it comes to art it's really personal so it's kind of like whatever mm-hmm. they want to do they should be able to do whatever the hell they want like i'm not going to judge that if it All was right. commercial work and and you know that's different like that's a different set of like in my opinion like rules or uh ethics i guess but if it's art and if i put out an, a piece of art uh, and I, you know, smudge it with a, with a smudge brush in, in Photoshop and I release it as a new piece of art. That's my prerogative. I can do whatever the right. hell I want. Yeah. Like I, absolutely. I can do, I can do I, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like you may think that it's like cheap and, and not, not n- low effort or whatever, but, the, and that's okay. You don't have to buy it. Like that's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, I, I don't think we should, I don't think any of us, 
I think everybody should keep those types of opinions like almost to yourself, really, because it's mm-hmm. like, it, it, I, I don't know, like you don't know the reason, like you don't know what's right. behind it. You don't know why. And at face value, we as craftsmen know how the sausage gets made. So right. I think it's easy for us to be like, well, yeah. I know how that's, ah, that's just this right. and that's just that. Right, right, right. And, yeah, okay. yeah. And, and you like have to like fight that instinct because you do know how the sausage is made. You have to fight mm-hmm. that instinct and say, well, no, let's this, let's think about it. And of course there are going to be people out there that are just like making random stuff to make money or whatever. But, um, you do have to kind of look at it like, okay, I, I can't let that cloud my, uh, I can't let that get in the way. And I can't definitely not tear down artists making art, trying to make a living from their art and all that sort of thing. Um, yeah, I think I'm rambling now, but nah, you're fine. It makes sense though. It makes you're, sense. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, let's I get, get through saying. the other drops and then right. we'll circle Well, there's back. only one one more left on uh, the Nifty, and this is... Well, we um, got, yeah, but we got a bunch yeah, of yeah, others, yeah. though. Uh, Anna Zilieva, I, I, I don't know, I still don't know if she's I'm She's the one that does the VR... She's the one that does, the, she's a VR painter, out. which yeah. I think, and her showing this one off, what she's dropping on Nifty, that is friggin' gorgeous. Like, and seeing all the stuff that she's doing in VR, like, watch this video. This is so cool, like, how she really gets into it. And it is just, it is gorgeous work. You know, I would I would love to own one of her pieces. So, yeah. I like that right there. Like, That's and then, a like, lot of the time detail. spent. Yeah, right? That's crazy. Super cool stuff. So, I, I love seeing, I, I think she is the forefront of NFT VR you know, art that is being made right now. So, yeah, uh, that's it for, um, oh, and the weekend is doing a drop the weekend. Yay. On, on the, this weekend, no. <laughs> or is he doing it on a weekday? Cause that would be completely ironic. Uh, actually, I think it is a so weekend. I think, it, I think it's on, uh, yeah, I, I think it's on Saturday. I don't know, okay. but it's like, Fitting. I Fitting. mean the weekend, but it's just, and it's not like a collab with anyone else. It just says the weekend. So I don't know. It, we'll it's, see. If if there was an artist associated with the weekend who the weekend hired to just do work for them and then they released it as an NFT, I think that's kind of crappy. You know, not oh, doing... he might have an angle. Look look at what he did with his angle with like the plastic surgery thing yeah. and all that. Like I Maybe. don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, anyway, he, he's he knows how to tell stories. It'd be curious to see if he puts in some serious effort into making right. something yeah. memorable. Right. And that's the that's that's the thing with musicians collabing with artists. You know, I feel like if you if you're not in if the if the musician isn't is only into it for making a quick buck, you know, I I don't think that's the correct that mindset was, you yeah. got to have. You know, I think it's, I think it needs to be. You know, you got to do a it natural with the art. relationship. Yeah, I think I that know. the market will correct that stuff. I think people are pretty good yeah, about agreed. smelling opportunism um, as opposed mm-hmm. to you know authentic authentic reasons and whatnot but yeah, yeah i mean with something as crazy as nfts have been there there is a a gold rush mentality to it yeah. so it can get harder to kind of determine like who is doing stuff for the quick buck and who is doing stuff because they believe in their own work or whatever you know but yeah it, it's hard it's hard right now yeah for sure the, nfts uh, are yeah did you yeah. see the Saturday Night Live uh, skit? Oh, yeah, that I was going to say they're yeah. becoming mainstream. That, yeah, that's in my my links, but I think they are. Yeah. they are mainstream. My my parents and my parents uh, and family. These are like older people were asking me about them this weekend, and I'm like, oh, it's mainstream now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the fact that NSL does a skit on it, it just tells you everything you need to know. It's just I I watched that and I was like, man, that's the industry that we have all been yeah. in. Every day for so many years, and now it's SNL. on SNL. It's just like yeah, you said, a, NSL. A jog- right. Yeah, it's weird. NSL and <laughs> yeah. NFL, <laughs> SNL. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 crazy, man. I I think it's it's great though. I think it's awesome. I'm I'm excited. I I hope uh, I hope it continues. I hope it um, grows and evolves and becomes mm-hmm. another avenue for artists to make money. I agree. I agree. And that's the way I see it. I I, I think people are eventually going to, it's going to become a new norm, 
you know, for as a way of artists to make their money, you know, and I'm even seeing it now, like a lot of people are, they're not posting their Instagram or their Twitter anymore. They're posting their foundation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it makes a lot more sense. Like why would, I don't believe, I think when I (laughs) kind of like woke up to NFTs, I was like late to the game, like really late to the game. And, but I went in like everything. I just kind of dove in and just like wanted to understand it as much as I could. And mm-hmm. it kind of, the a revelation happened with in my brain, and I was like, "Well, wait a minute. Why are we built? Why are we we as in artists who make visual, you know, we make visuals? Why are we giving all of our IP away to Instagram? Why are we giving all of our IP right. mm-hmm. our IP away to Behance? Why are we helping to build these platforms, most of which are are built on the privacy of others?" Uh, mm-hmm. and, or built to sell you Photoshop. And why not give it, you know, sans minting fees to a platform right. that is uh, is there to help you keep making art and, and not starve to death? And, like, to right. me, like, right. that that made a lot of sense to me. The fact, like, well, okay, well, why are we posting so much to Instagram for a heart, for an icon of a heart? Like, why? Right. Like, that's crazy. Like, why not, you know, post that, you know, maybe the best of the 10 things you made, mint it, and maybe not only will we be able to share it with people, they'll still be able to like it. Yeah. Uh, but now mm-hmm. you actually have a chance of, of making some money and you're not putting it into this, not putting it into Facebook, if that, right? Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, and it's, I mean, it's still, you're still putting money into it. People are making money off of it, but they're making money off of, your success essentially right, right. absolutely and you still own it you know you, you still own the rights to the work and that that's really yeah um key too and like yeah it just it makes you think like about all these platforms these visual posting platforms that artists filmmakers have built they've made these billion dollar platforms that they get no piece of mm-hmm. like yeah that's crazy yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and and it'll it'll normalize it'll come back around to it's it's going to come back to a, a popularity contest again, just like Instagram or anything else. Yeah, it's just there's I, I think, money now. I think as of right now, prices are really inflated, you know, and well, uh, for, uh, maybe not for the single for the single ones. You know, if you're looking to if right. you're looking to collect a single edition of someone, uh, that's the price is probably about right. You know, you're going to have versus your mid-range, like your highs, your if lows. If you've got like a collection of a hundred or whatever that, yeah. you know, you're like, okay, here, I'm selling these hundred, you know, nifties that I made or whatever. Come buy them for 20, 30 bucks a pop, you right. know? Right, right, right. It's like, that's uh, once one, uh, but then it also comes into the minting fees. If you sell them for 30 bucks a pop, you're actually losing money by doing that. But still, like, hopefully that will all change. Though. That will all change eventually. Yeah. You know, there are even some sites, uh, one that Tokyo Megaplex has been using. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, there's basically the minting fees are like pennies, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So he's been minting stuff and giving away stuff for free, left and right, you know? But it's like once those minting fees are gone and it's just like selling a print. You know, for 20, mm-hmm. 30 bucks, mm-hmm. I would, I, I think that's where you're going to get a lot of like artists collecting other artists stuff, you know, because mm-hmm. right now, while, it, uh, and this is what I was talking about earlier with Nifty, where it's like, it used to be, you could, you could, you could buy a Stuzor for $200. He, he sold his for 200 bucks, which is awesome. That's a great deal for just owning one of a piece of one of my favorite artists, right? You know? Mm-hmm. I bought three of them. I flipped them for thirty five hundred dollars, but that's neither here nor there, you know. But it's like I, uh, 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 like if you want to own that person's art and maybe like put it on your TV or something like that, you know, mm-hmm. that's your you're able to do that, you know. You own that art or that that print, you know. But it's like it, it's like now nifty. Anyone who gets on, it's like oh, it barrier to entry thirteen hundred dollars. It's like. Yeah, outside of my price range, totally out. The, you, yeah, you yeah. Just, you, you're you're now you are now catering to collectors only. 
you know, collectors who have a lot of money who are willing to, you know, and why Rich in the world, There's... if you're going to spend that type of money, why would you spend $4,000 on an open edition when you could probably go to that person's foundation page and buy one of their single edition yeah, unique piece for $4,000, yeah, right? Yeah, for exactly. Sure. Yeah, I've I've only done the single editions, mm-hmm. and I just I don't know, just mainly because I I don't know, just felt more important somehow. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but the idea of an edition is not. I, it's an idea that I've been playing with because uh, sometimes I'll have an idea for something that isn't super grand, and like, right? I still want to like you know, share that with the world or whatever. So mm-hmm. maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know, man. The whole thing is still equalizing um, for sure. And it's, it's tricky. I I do see, uh, I do see it sort of becoming like you were saying, like the collector, the stuff that, and it's, it's like that way in, in, uh, uh, in actual physical art as well. You know, you've got the high end gallery experience mm-hmm. where collectors are going. Right. And then you have the art fair at your town, you know. Right. In, in Absolutely. The, yeah. And like that's, you're buying. You can a, still have really good artists at the art fair. Right. You know? So, but it's, you get them for much cheaper. Right. Right now, at the beginning stages of this, everything's mixed in. You've got like mm-hmm. the art fair. Uh, person is sitting next to the gallery person it, they're yeah. all mixed together right now and yeah. i think like you were saying like it's going to start to evolve into these siphoned areas which i don't know if that's good or bad i i i, I kind of think it's a little bit bad because it's bad for dis- i think so it's bad for discovery right um and, and i think that's the challenge but it, it's going to do that for sure it's going to equalize that way i agree mm-hmm. yeah yeah. Matt, you've got one more Maker's got Place. Got one more. Uh, jumping over uh, to Maker's the Place, drops. there was really only yeah. one uh, one notable artist that I I thought I thought this was neat. So it's uh, Brendan Dawes. Uh, they use AI to analyze frames from Tekken, the game Tekken, in order to create moving generative pieces of work, which I think is that's that's pretty rad. Interesting. You know? Yeah. Like I really like the 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 AI ideas of like doing work, like the stuff that like uh nathan shipley does man that stuff is killer you know absolutely killer so i you know i i I, it's neat to see someone doing something more than just like hopping into c4d throwing some you know forester stuff in there and the daz model and being like here's my art you know but like taking it you're still thinking like a sausage maker I am yeah, thinking right. like a sausage making. You're you're absolutely right. Actually, yeah. the drop that's going on or like right this second, you know, like one I didn't mention it because the musician didn't mention anything about it. So I'm not going to mention it if they don't have enough balls to you know mention something. I'm not going to mention it. Why would I? I I do agree with that. I, you know? I feel like a mashup is something you're supposed to be proud of. Right, a collab is supposed you're supposed to be proud of, and you're supposed to be ready to promote with this amazing artist that you vibe with. Right. That you really vibed with right. and you worked hard together to make right. this piece. Because if like, they're not tweeting it out, it means they didn't care. I, w- right. I don't know. Here, here's my thoughts on that. Like, we don't know, right? Like, we don't know. Like, there could be so many scheduling conflicts, but the management is saying, the NFT time is now. If you don't do this right now, then mm-hmm. it's not going to work. Well, I don't have time right now. I'm working on this album. I'm over here. I already got commitments over there. That's okay. Just do the minimum amount of work, and the mm-hmm. artist will take you know the the brunt and of it. We just need to get this out now because now is this this whole thing's going to like d- go dead in two weeks, right? And to me, but that's that the is point one big cash, cash grab. grab. That's just a cash grab. Then you know, you're right. Like, and why I, in the I world should I support them if they're just going to do a cash grab? You you like, don't have to. Right. Exactly. You don't right. have unless to, I, I think unless you know the artists and you understand like here's here's the thing okay if somebody if, if, okay if somebody if, uh, came to you for yeah, that if, and if, if the if uh, if uh, the mountain goats or the weaker thans came to me and said we want to do an NFT I would be all on board you know and I said I'd say let's do a custom NFT you guys create some custom music for it and I will create a custom thing and I'll do it all for free right now and we will split it 50/50 right it's like that that to me is the way these NFTs should be done you know versus because like it has okay meaning. here's my here's my track that I just made now make a cool music video and we'll sell it as an NFT and then you guys you get 10% 
But do it all. Oh yeah. yeah if do Reba McIntyre came to me right now and wanted something done, <laughs> I'd be like, I don't know any of your music. And, I thought you were I'll about to it. say, I'm in no matter what. <laughs> yeah, I would be all over that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've already been approached by like a random brand, uh, and uh-huh. I just don't even know like what to, what I don't even know what that is. Like, I don't even know what to do with that. Like, because yeah. I don't get it. Like, are you hoping to like use my name, or are you hoping just to have a piece in the space? Like, what is right. the tie-in? Like, I right. don't understand. Absolutely. It. Mm-hmm. Like. If- the, uh, the 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 drop from the other day on nifty as a really let me go to nifty's site and i can tell you who it was it was um let me go to the marketplace sorry it was yeah we gotta OG keep an eye on the time E-sports too yeah i got and some. josh pierce right so josh pierce is a really good artist and stuff like that i like really like but then he did it with red bull it's like red bull's dropping on nifty it's like you know you know if you know josh pierce's stuff you know, Josh maybe Pierce he really did all that work. You know, maybe he loves Red Bull. Maybe it was a, maybe Th- that could you know? be true. If that Monster really came to me, then I would be on board. I gotta say, drink Monster <laughs> Energy drink all the time. Yeah, Monster Energy drink, drink of champions. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if it was the right, if like if a skateboard brand came to me, I'd be like, uh, yeah. I'm taking two weeks to do this thing. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, but yeah, but this was that not feeling there. That's art. You yeah, know? it was yeah. a it was a brand of like it was a food food brand and Mm -hmm. i didn't really understand other than that i made some candy uh nfts like what the connection could possibly have been and even that was like Mm -hmm. it wasn't about the food per se Um, right so yeah i I don't know it's weird so i i think that i've been hearing a lot of other uh fellow nft artists like getting approached by brands that are just looking Mm -hmm. i just want to say that we are in this space i just want to say that we've made an nft and they're just looking to check a box uh because it's the hot new thing and i just drop something on rareable then or how about support some artists (laughs) how about like go buy some art and like brag about how you're buying the art and and that's how you get into the space or like associate yourself with the space like support some artists like they they said seriously if the weekend was to go in and buy like one artist and then promote that artist you know that's you know that artist's work would blow up like it would increase in value significantly because you've got some famous person talking about this person's art and then they do a collab together it's like that's going to make it so much more powerful yeah you know they have to invest in the space in order to like get a piece of the community and like Mm -hmm. like if if a brand if this food brand like bought all my pieces, then I'd be a lot more open to listening to them. Not just because right. they've paid me, but it mean it, it it means that they're like invested in the space, right? And, and yeah. like if right. if they're if you're just a brand looking to cash in or put your name against an NFT, even if you're looking to give all the proceeds to an artist, mm-hmm. then before you reach out, buy some art. Like go out there and like right. support some people and like do what good brands do and like get involved. Um, but yeah, Yeah. anyway, I agree. Well, we got some community drops. Dorpy wants to stop by and say, hi, hi, Dorpy. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta gotta get through these, uh, community drops. first. So let's, let's get through these real quick. We'll we'll try and go quick here. We're we're all kind of short on time. So let's start with, uh, Joe Herman, Joe Herman. Herman. Yeah. Our good friend, Joe Herman, uh, uh, did his first drop on open sea, uh, mm-hmm. uh, if, if you've hung out with us in New York at NAB, uh, you East. know, Joe, come on, he's, he's around the space. Yeah. So yeah, uh, this is his first drop. You can get it on open C. Next up we got, uh, I don't know if I'm going out of order Paul? for you, Dave, Paul, uh, Paul Robinson. Yes. Paul Robinson just released, uh, his first drop on foundation, uh, super cool stuff. He was hitting me up this weekend. He was like, Hey, how can I do this? And I was like, use fields use fields and use vertex maps and stuff and i was like yeah now i'm gonna do a tutorial on it i'm very excited about it but uh nice. paul stuff super exciting yeah first drop on uh on foundation next up who do we got dave aaron Sorensen. aaron Sorensen did his first drop man so uh, one thing this is gorgeous this is absolutely gorgeous that, but that this water is, no. I, I will say oh and that that lens flare at the beginning with the the uh the rainbow oh beautiful uh-huh. so beautiful right you know, I but I want to see. I want it to be longer. I want to. I want to see more. I mm. want. I want a good loop. 
I love you, Aaron Sorensen, oh, yeah, but yeah. I want to loop. I want to loop, you know, because it's jarring to the eyes, in my opinion. So, anyway, mm. uh, who we got next? Uh, we got Zach Corzine. Zach Corzine, next. yeah. Zach's um, my boy. Uh, he, He's got some work on Super Rare right now, Textile tex- Techniques 01. If you know Zach, you know he is like beautiful. all about the beautiful procedural you know, stuff. I guarantee you this always is Always with the colors, man. Always he's with so the colors. on point with the colors. Yeah, very good. He's an awesome well, nice. guy. The colors, yeah. I love his work so much. I absolutely, absolutely. love it. Yeah. Yeah. Next up, who do we got, Dave? Uh, I also wanted to – oh, man. I got the wrong link here. Um, I did, I just wanted to mention that, that we mentioned him last week, but I did want to mention that Rev has some more out. And so I'll put a, I'll put a link there. I, I have the wrong link. Yeah. I was just about to say, here, unfortunately, <laughs> you're not going to show my uh, stuff. Come on guys. Yeah. Come absolutely on. Let's go. We are. It's you, on foundation. You, you bet right? it's on the, yeah. Is it on foundation? It is. It's on. Yeah, it is foundation. So next up, we've got this really awesome artist. <laughs> he goes by the name Chad Arnold Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> oh sorry sorry your last uh your last tutorial was they don't arcane. pay me for that chad octane, octane ashley but that yeah no I, these are these are really pretty stuff you know i i i, I love the the sucrose trance you know <laughs> it, it's really good so did you when you're making those were you just offsetting the uh offsetting the the value or what were you doing? I don't talk sausage, man. Oh, I don't yeah. talk oh, yeah. sausage when I'm <laughs> when I'm doing my art. All right, all right, all right. That's right. That's uh, cool. Yeah, no, yeah. the the uh, I just I just really love uh, how candy looks and just like yeah. the way light bounces yeah. around and just the yeah. the uh, uh, the response that it gets when you when you see something delicious like that is just fun. So absolutely, yeah. Um, the 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 one uh the, my favorite piece of that series was the first one that sold i think there's 3 left in that series but yeah mm-hmm. it's good stuff it's fun um oh yeah yeah you got these 3 here too the uh the original ones that yeah you that was oh, the yeah, original yeah, yeah. um one which is funny because uh didn't nick buy one of them from you yeah so nick got into a bid <laughs> a little bit of a bid war for sphere Ural, and uh uh I didn't think fucking Zen was going to sell because fucking Zen was like more my, um, my own kind of like minimalist style and wanted Mm -hmm. to do that one for a while. And, uh, people actually convinced me to put it up and I'm like, I don't think anybody's going to buy this thing. And it ended up being like the, the one that sold for the most of (laughs) the three that I put out first. And I'm like, of course that's how it goes. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, um, I've got a, some new stuff that I've been toying around with, but I'm just kind of letting that stuff uh, sell first before I push push anything else. Yeah, cool. I got uh, I got Rev stuff too. Ah, if you cool. want to see Crystal yeah. Bath is the one that still yeah needs Crystal to hit the Bath reserve is, price is nice. It's yeah. super pretty, and his stuff is is <clears throat> good price too. I'm thinking about changing my price because mine is is kind of high, and and ETH has taken off since, and so it, now it's even higher. Yeah. That's one thing What's that I wish I wish oh, you yeah, could set gone up a dollar price yeah. versus an ether price, you know, just so you can set it at a set amount, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, ETH uh, just went up a bit. Looks like over the past twenty four hours too. Yeah. yeah, I might, I might. Do, I mean, it's going to cost me a fee, but I might change the price on mine. See if I get a bite because it's been retweeted like crazy and it's been mm-hmm. liked like crazy and all that. But yeah. nobody's nobody's going to show the trigger. it. You're going to show it. I mean, I guess again. I could yeah, try and show it again. I'd have to find my what's my what's my URL? Who am I again? You're Mograph Dave, Dave, right? Dave. I'm Dave. Mograph yeah. Dave. Just making sure I'm Dave. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, this is this is my piece right here. It's a uh, heart seed. See if I can. That's about as big as I can get that screen there. But uh, it is original right music now done point, by Dave as well. So. I did the music for it. Yeah, yeah. one point eight eight ETH. It's kind of high. That was not that expensive when I when <laughs> I'm into this. I can't. So hear it. I'm thinking about taking it down probably to one. Oh, uh, we haven't. Yeah, because you can't hear the. Yeah, audio. I don't have it piped oh, through. Okay. Um, but uh, I mean, I guess I could so unmute. Ex- Let's explain see. the piece to me. He doesn't talk about the sausage. I'm not asking how talk, it was yeah, made. <laughs> You see, I want to know what I want to know what it means. Down back in the day, and it's kind of a personal thing. Okay. Uh, however, I will be talking about it soon on the show. Oh, that's Matt great. knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. See, that's the yes. stuff that I love, man. I like I like hearing what was it that 
you know, mm-hmm. drew you into this? Like, why a pearl? Like, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Here, I'll I'll play the music if it will. You can hear it a little bit here. It's very simple. I don't hear it at and all. And it loops. Uh, the music loops with it as well it after like four. Oh, you don't hear no. Oh, that's right. You don't hear it because I had to change my audio to you guys because right. I was skipping on your side. Anyway, everybody on the stream could hear it. Okay. Yay. Right. Huh, beautiful work. <laughs> all right, yeah. That, that audio, though. Yeah. That audio, yeah. though. <laughs> Um, um, all right. Next up on the list, let's uh, go, get through here. We got Ryan Talbot. Ryan Talbot. He's been yep. doing a bunch of these lately, and uh, he's got this one on Maker's Place. This is pretty. Oh, that's great. And yeah. I think this one sold already. Did it sell? I'm not mistaken, but uh, you know, we like to show them anyway because somebody might want to yeah. buy them. They might be for sale again. Um, that's cool. Go to edition sold, right? activity. Go over to edition. Where's that? Act- See, down I'm there. not familiar down. with. Bl- Maker's Place. Yeah, Maker's Place is kind of weird. Go to edition. Okay, so someone is accepting offers. Someone bought it for five ETH. Wow. So, but that person is still accepting offers, so you could still make an offer on that. You know, It was Gabo from oh, yeah. The Simpsons. <laughs> Gabo? <laughs> Gabo! <laughs> That's funny. Oh, uh, Gabo. Do we have anyone Isaac. else? Yes, Isaac. Yeah. A good friend, Just Mr. Nick of Isaac. Time. I, how do you, ter, ter, I say it wrong. Terex. You say it Terex. wrong every time. Don't even try. I know because I always want to say Terrakis. It just sounds <laughs> yeah. more badass. That sounds, that sounds right? like a dinosaur. Right? <laughs> Terrakosaurus? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, this is on Foundation. This is his This is his Gemini piece. His Gemini piece. Yeah. His Gemini or his Genesis piece? Genesis. That's what it is. Genesis. I, I thought for a second, right, like, is there a kind of piece that i don't know about no, <laughs> no Gemini. Yeah. yeah i get those confused <laughs> and lastly we do have a listener drop that was sent in as well yes I think. um who is this pixel is makes me happy pixel makes me happy yeah why don't i have yeah. that on there anyway i don't know uh, you put it there pepe pixel <laughs> makes me happy uh they uh they hit me up so i checked my i checked my twitter you know to see who's gonna ask me for a foundation invite uh uh <laughs> Uh, this person did not, but they sent me their work, so I was like, okay, cool. And then I love the I, I like non fungible fart with actually really good work, and I love the the WTF is an NFT, and I love how like you know anytime you have like a be- a really bad uh, soft body collision that just messes up, I love that. Yeah. It's like okay, I know how the sausage is made, and that's <laughs> funny. You know, only people who know how the sausage is made. Is going we'll to get that funny. joke, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Good stuff. Yeah, Good yeah. Stuff. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. Uh, that's the, that's <laughs> the drops. The now, the pay, pay. That's funny. <laughs> the, the, uh, oh, I, I also had a note in here that Logan uh, is working on a, a Beeple NFT game in Unreal Engine. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'll see if I can get a link. I don't know if that's. Do you see the, the Beeple generator? Like last yeah. week or something. Yeah, that's cool. Like you just yeah. click go and it makes a beeple render. You you start getting repeats after you know just a couple of times. But yeah. uh, oh, can I? Well, there yeah. is a shout out somebody. Yeah, do yeah, it totally. Uh, I invited on. Uh, is there a term for like somebody that you invite on foundation? Like your your An invitee uh, your, or something? Your foundation I don't know. Spawn, ward. Your, your ward. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Trevor. Kerr uh, is on cool. Foundation now. Oh, nice. Uh, his username is uh, Tervork, T-E-R-V-O-R-K, and he just dropped uh, his first piece there, which... Nice. That's, there we go. I can't get it to... Ooh. I got it. I got it. Pretty. That's... I like the fabric. Yeah. I like the uh, the texturing on it. Yeah, he's good at that, man. The the color looks really good too. I haven't even seen this piece. Yeah. This is yeah. like the first time I'm seeing the it. The reds. The reds, the colors, children. The reds, the though. colors. But Bye. the uh man, I also invited let's see if they posted yet. I'll pimp all the people that I invited. <laughs> Actually, I don't know if they've uh made anything yet, but I've invited quite a few really amazing artists. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh Amador Valenzuela is somebody that I invited. Do you guys know him? I don't think so. Uh, let me see. He's on Foundation. Let me see. Let's see if I know. Can you search? Has for Nick people? dropped yet? 
did Nick drop? No, no. He he's he's taking uh, sort of like a. Um, he's a collector. He's I more of that. a collector, yeah. and yeah. he just likes yeah. he just loves like standing off to the sidelines and watching all these amazing artists do their thing mm-hmm. and uh, provide uh, plugins and assets yeah. and all that stuff. He likes he likes that sort of side of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't find his stuff. Anyway, look him up. <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool. Uh, there was a there was a uh, a drawing or a raffle for a Beeple piece. Yeah. This last week. Oh yeah. yeah. As well. I yeah, I yeah. recommend people like if you if you want to get on on that get in on that follow Beeple and just set your notifications to on. Because it was literally 20 minutes that you had to imp- enter the raffle, and they had 8,000 entries. Could be a raffle, could be a render of a giant penis, you never know. <laughs> Jeez, I know, that one yesterday, geez. Oh my gosh. It's like... How is that... It's not... Is it, I, is it censored enough to where it's not taken down? I don't down? know, is maybe. It, it's like, hmm. okay, people's got his $69 million, his $100 million, like, all right... I guess all yeah. the gloves are off now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, look, look who it is. Oh, hey, Dorpy. Hey, Matt. <laughs> What's up? How's it going? It's good. You doing all right? Yeah, I'm yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, I, tr- I, I just wanted to come in and say I, I tried to enter the Beeple raffle right. last week, okay. but uh, it was a little rough. <laughs> Didn't you use the rough <laughs> joke last week? <laughs> no, that was rough. Get it right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I also tried to be uh, to to kind of mint a piece on Rarible. Uh huh. But it said the file size was too big. Yeah, I think it was uh, too many bytes. <laughs> My God, what is happening right now? I need to get high. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I know I keep uh, hounding you for uh, this, but uh, can I get an invite to Foundation? You know what, Dorpy? I, I've actually I have one invite left. I will give you. I will give you an invite to Foundation. Yes. What? Yep. Oh man. Oh man. What are you get, go, What are you gonna I make, Dorpy? Yeah. I don't know. I guess I gotta go start working on it. All right. All right. I guess I'm gonna get out of here. Uh, <laughs> if you need me, though, Matt. Yeah. I'll be in my lab. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> oh, lab like dog. All right. Bye. Oh, <laughs> Dorpy. <laughs> Came for the MoGraph. Stayed for the Dorpy. Oh, uh, boy. You know, Dorpy's got his own TikTok. He does. Yeah. He's on the MoGraph TikTok. Oh, yeah. I'll tell my kids. <laughs> 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 oh, man. That was terrible. Uh, one last yes. thing that I want to say on the drop before uh, we get going is um, I want to talk about the uh, the open editions on Nifty real quick because um, I've noticed some of these... Some of these, we used to all jump in on the open editions because it was a great way to collect. And sometimes you could flip them for, you know, you know, a little bit of a, a uh, profit. 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 But I would say on some of these, some of these lesser known people, you might be able to wait until after their drop and like maybe a couple days later because those prices start going below what they were initially offered for. Right. Like I've got a bunch right, of right. pieces right now to where it took maybe a month and a half before they're back up to where they were whenever I purchased them, you know? So, you know, it's, I don't know, keep an eye on things because, uh, yeah, you may be able to get them for cheaper if you're looking to collect, you know, if you're looking to do whatever, but, uh, Nifty's weird, man. I'll tell you what, it's like. It it was it was the place, and then I think everyone started discovering Maker's Place and Rarible and you know uh, um, Foundation and stuff. And now it's like yeah. I, I feel like Nifty. I feel like Nifty is in the same re- realm as Rarible, you know, as far as like design and stuff. But if you post on Nifty, if you get on Nifty, you're guaranteed to make oh, half a million to a million dollars, rich. right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. I don't know. Um, I got a couple links, mm-hmm. a couple crypto links I could add in here as well. Yeah. Uh, um, you know what? Premiumbeat.com. I do. It randomly has articles not related to audio at all. Yes. Like, mm-hmm. they have a lot of them. Like, I, I actually read some of their articles sometimes. So, um, I just think it's random that Premiumbeat.com Premium has Beat. these com. film 
and and graphics uh, articles and such. Mm-hmm. But that being said, what up? What up? Jonathan Winbush oh. is in their latest article. That's so, cool. Uh, you can check that out, and it's talking about his world of NFTs and what he does. Uh, so make sure you check that out, and uh, of course, little little uh, link to the the course at the bottom. All of right, that too, you know? that's you know? awesome. Yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, so check that out, and then other links that I have here. I already talked about the SNL NFTs, which is awesome. Uh, I got another link to these statues that Maxime has been doing of of oh, artists in the gosh. industry that are naked. <laughs> um. He's done, I think, three I, so far. If anyone's was, seen the Beeple one, the Beeple with yeah. the, 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 like, seven-foot-long dong, right, that going wrapped around, around his, his body. neck. Yeah. Yeah. That one, that um, one was there. That, that one exists. <laughs> Octane Jesus one. Right. And then he did one of naked EJ. Right. But he's he's holding his pug right in the right over his junk. You know, appropriate right. place. Right. Uh, so uh, I, won't one pull, last, I won't put that on the feed. <laughs> uh, uh, do you have any more links? Cause if not, I have two I, more real okay. quick. Uh, Jules was on CNBC, so yeah. make sure you check that out. He's talking about the future of NFTs. That's a big one. He's I don't know how he fits it all on his head. <laughs> and then um, just a, a good article, and, and he talked about this if you run REF's Clubhouse call last Friday, which is uh, – this is a, the security Clubhouse call. Uh, our friend Crossfader. He uh, fell for a scammer and he lost his crypto wallet. That's, Damn, that uh, sucks. Uh, it's it's pretty bad. And the thing about this is, you don't just lose your wallet, right? You lose yeah. you lose your login for all of your sites. Yeah. So that's something to take into consideration. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and security, security is a big deal. Okay, sorry. What uh, else you got? Last thing that I was gonna say. So I was talking because I, I had a couple of foundation invites. I don't now that I gave them to Dorpy. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, I was talking to someone who I thought, you know, I was like, Hey, do you want this foundation invite? And they were like, well, I'm already on foundation, but I was a little worried about posting because my friends aren't doing well. And I was like, listen, you got to post, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll cover your mint fees. You know, I was like, that way you have nothing to worry about. You know, if it doesn't sell, you're not out any money, blah, blah, blah. And so it, it gave me a really good idea. You know, there was the what was it the genesis foundation or whatever that did you mm-hmm. know that was was it 888 or was it uh i think it was 888 no it was it illustrator was Illustr- it? Il- or, yeah illustrator or uh medico I think, I think it was i don't remember no, I, one I, of them i thought it was illustrator one of them maybe did a kevin will know because kevin yeah, actually yeah. was a recipient so there's the the gemini project you know where uh they were going to cover mint fees for their first for people for artists first drop and i thought mm-hmm. that was a really good idea because, you know, uh, what a better way for artists to give back to help promote other artists than yeah. help covering mint fees for uh, up and coming artists and stuff like that. You know, because a lot of us, some of us are starving artists. You know, we like doing this 3D stuff, but we can't afford $150 in mint fees yeah, or whatever. They're bad you know. So um, really I think bad. what we're going to, and I, 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 I don't have it all worked out yet, but I want to uh, like make a wallet that people can donate to, and that money will go mm. to help cover other, uh, other people's first initial drops. And I think, I think it's a really cool idea. It's a way for artists to help other artists, you know, and also help, you know, say you sell something for one ETH, you throw 10, 20 bucks into the pot. You know, that yeah. helps get a new artist closer to minting their first piece. So right. and we get everyone doing that. Someone who, you know, is on the the Genesis, you know, who who gets chosen as a Genesis artist also, you know, throws 10, 20 bucks after they mint their first piece. It's like that just keeps on giving back to the community. So yeah. uh, that will be in the works. Uh, uh, make sure and listen each week so that we can uh, give you more information on that. So. And Kevin says it is Illustrator. Cool. Who is Tim Tim Kang? Tim Kang That's, is Illustrator. Yeah. 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 So uh, yeah. Illustrator, yeah. I think, owns the number one into the ETH. I think. I believe so. I don't know. I believe so. If uh, anyone's looking to get a, a good deal on a number eight into the ETH, I would definitely mm-hmm. recommend mm-hmm. looking at Nifty right now. Yeah. So go buy mine right go now. Go buy Dave's. He's got it listed for a really good price. Anyway. Really, really good price. Yep. Yeah. Uh, that is it. Are we done with the drop? I think so. All right. 
Well, we're going to get out of here. Chad? Yes, Chad. Thank so you. For being Thank on. you for being on the show. Anytime. Anytime. Always a lot to talk about. We took like three things on a list of topics and yeah. made it a three hour show. <laughs> yeah, I think you could <laughs> chop this into three podcasts. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it will be. The yeah. drop is its own show now. Oh, so, there you go. Four. Uh, there you go. There yeah, you there yep. you go. Um, all the things online uh, are where you can find Chad. You don't really have to try hard to find Chad online. I yeah. Mean, you just type yeah. his name, you type gray, Grayscale Gorilla. You'll, yeah. you'll see my stupid face. CGPOV, yeah, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. And uh, go go to mograph.com slash talks. Check out the mm-hmm. uh, DFW C4D video of Chad yeah. explaining I watched how that the other day. It was great. For, yeah. I just so had great. it on in the background. Remember places. You know, yeah. While I was doing my, uh, while I was cleaning my house. <laughs> Maybe? Maybe? Maybe places? <laughs> I know. I want to get Maybe. that place went out of business. Oh damn! Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. it sucks. That was a great place for it. We're gonna have to have a really big DFWC 4D. Yeah, you're gonna have to come back, hang out with us. Yeah, yeah dude. Beers, beers, beers. I mean, Texas is open. Technically, we could have it. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Texas. Free for all, boys. Yep. Come on in. Yeah. Dude, I went to a Taekwondo tournament this weekend, and it was like elbow to elbow. Half the people were wearing masks. I was one of it's, them. We're not. almost there. Uh, whatever. So, so close. So yeah. close. Hang in there, people. We'll hopefully, get there. Hopefully everybody's doing all right. We're Hang in there, kitty. It's almost Friday. There. Yeah. It's always almost Friday. <laughs> and it always feels like a Monday. Right. So. All right. Let's do it. Cool. We're going to get out of here. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review on your podcatcher of choice. Helps get our ratings up. You can also subscribe to all the things the podcast the newsletter all of that you can say you've been there done that got the t-shirt with the mograph logo t paul bab classic feel the bab 2020 shirt all the profits from that go to doctors without borders the render things t-shirt hoodie and long sleeve t the that render is fire shirt which you're only allowed to wear ironically unless unless you're shams and uh the mograph blandishment retro t-shirt you can get that too and we're on facebook twitter instagram youtube and mograph dot (laughs) Calm. <laughs> cool and that's it all right all right until next time i'm dave and i'm matt and i'm chad have a good one later yo bye everybody it's pretty good i guess MoGraph.com, an online resource for motion graphic artists. Start your week with the MoGraph podcast. Industry news, interviews with your favorite artists, and terrible humor. Watch live shows and interviews from MoGraph events like NAB, SeaGraph, HalfRes, and local meetups. <laughs> Our MoGraph talks feature live demos and motivation from artists all around the world. Sometimes you got to make stuff that you're not going to put on your reel, and I'm not here to judge. What if Rick and Morty show up for the countdown at midnight? That's where I peaked in life, in my career. we got to stop this thing, Rick! It's going to kill us all! Hear from the people that create your software, design your render engines, and artists that are changing the face of modern motion graphics. You get that render done. Yeah, you better frame, frame what? MoGraph tutorials and online classes will teach you about Cinema 4D, After Effects, as well as other popular software and render engines. Throw in the HDR Studio, take the render settings, pick the HDR, put in a reflection, and gorgeous. Branch into new software, learn time-saving tips, techniques, workflows, and lessons that'll keep you up to date in the world of motion design. Oh, brother, those are some of my favorite elves. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join the conversation in our live sessions. Check out our plugins or join the hundreds of daily active users in our Slack channel for technical help, advice, contests, or just to joke around. Real nice banana. Yeah, that's so funny. All right. I'm going to live forever. <laughs> Subscribe today and get the latest updates on our YouTube and other social media channels. Take all your dreams and just do it! We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe to MoGraph.com.